Howdy, y'all, and welcome to Liberty Libations number 70. This is episode number 70, y'all. We're, I mean, we're closer to 100 than we are to, to 50. I mean, to, than we are to zero. <laughs> that was crazy. Say, that's not true, but. Not 50, no. <laughs> We're we're more than two thirds of the way to a hundred, is what I was and trying to say. <laughs> think of where this started, right? It was just you said, "Oh, I'm gonna just hop on and stream one night," and now yeah. it's like it's wild, know. man. Like I I think the first one was just me, and then the second one was you and me. No, no, no. We we went back. I went back and looked. I hopped on the first one, so you, you weren't hopped alone. on the first one. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, man. And now we've got an actual crew. Um, y'all, thank y'all for joining. Really appreciate y'all being here. Um, Alden, what are you drinking, buddy? Uh, I've got a pale ale from Hutton and Smith, a local, actually, I say local Tennessee, but like still 15 minutes away. I, and that's um, technically local. It's yeah. Not, it's just not in state. I crossed the border, but it's still 10 minutes away or something. So Alden hops borders. <laughs> yeah. I'm smuggling Zach, beer in. Zach, you drinking anything? Yeah, it's got a white claw as usual. Zach, we got to get you a new regular beverage, man. White Claw, like is rabbit the, eye wine. We gotta, yeah, that delivery needs to show up already. Actually, uh, I meant to ask you, is that going to my old place? Because that's gonna be weird now. No, I'm gonna hand deliver it. Okay, cool. Nick, what you drinking? If you are, uh, nothing right now because I got nerd meeting, but if I do get thirsty, I still have uh, you still got your this, desk bottle, bottle from uh, yeah. yeah, Pennsylvania straight bourbon. Heck yeah, I've also got a bottle just. A tequila also just there we go. out there. But. There we go. All right, y'all. Well, tonight's episode is brought to you by Rabbit Eye Wine, the finest of all blueberry wines made here in the state of Georgia. Um, family owned, grown, and made, shipped right to your door. You can order it at rabbiteyewine.com slash shop. Um, yeah, you can order it in, I think, 30-something states, and they sell in places all around georgia so make sure you go check that out is he uh, cheating on us by sponsoring tower gang also oh interesting it is it the, is, i don't know would that be considered cheating do we have a rivalry with tower gang i don't think so i think that is a complete do we need one no we don't need one i don't i have no interest in taking what do they call like a three-way <laughs> relationship you know maybe it's one of those a thruple is that a word? Is that a real thing? <laughs> I think it's a real word. I think wow. Okay. That, yeah. I'll go well, swinging. Grumpy says number 70. You're darn right, man. If we had started on episode zero, this would be 69. It's true. Um, yeah. Episode 69 was a good one. Dang I, it. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I um, was going to paint my face with a six and a it. nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad that I moved last week. The entire third round of trivia was all about the number 69. Oh, man. I might yeah. have. Was the been... answer 69 or were you guessing 69 meaning? You were guessing other. different 69 meanings. Like, what are the three <laughs> countries whose whose uh, country codes start with six, nine? Nice. No one got it. It would be very interesting would be, if every answer was 69. That's what I was just going to say. It would be hilarious if you just had well, different right. ways to ask and the answer I didn't was watch that it. same. So I'm going to take a – give me a continent. Uh, mainly Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. Cambodia. Singapore. No. There, there are countries you've never heard of. Oh, except, okay. Except maybe one. Bhutan? Um, what? No, Bhutan? Not, no, not Bhutan. Everyone's heard of Bhutan. Come on. Okay, with the with the uh with the grand dragon or whatever his name is. What I I don't know what king. that is, but uh yeah, no, I I it's not that. Uh, that's like the title for their king or something. Let me see. So it was Micronesia, mm. okay. Tokelau, T O K E L A U, and Marshall Islands. Oh, I know Marshall Islands. Yeah, yeah Marshall, Marshall Islands. Islands. People know that. I don't know Tukalau. <laughs> Grum Grumpy says he's going <laughs> with Tower Gang. <clears throat> great. That's just great. Perfect. Um, are we streaming to all platforms tonight? Yes, we are. Um, we're on Rumble. We are on. Um, yeah, well, we're on Rumble. Uh, Y'all, we're on Rumble. We're on Odyssey. We're on Instagram tonight. We're on Twitter in two places. We're on YouTube and we're on Facebook. Are we on uh, MySpace too? And <laughs> If we if we could be, then yes, we're also 
We're also so. streaming on PCC Network, which you can go check that out, which we will soon have merch for. I know I keep saying that, but I literally started designing this for today. We will have merch, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, you can also go watch documentaries. Um, you can check out our other shows um, and just check, see a whole bunch of stuff. We have podcasts, we got film and TV, we got everything. I tried to make a little plug for Divide and Dominate. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was uh, I was doing I was filling out the uh, award nominations okay. for the uh, LNC for uh, the upcoming national convention, and one of the awards is uh, you know best statewide or federal candidate. So I'm like, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna put Shane in there. Yeah. So I, I put Shane in there, and I'm like, and I uh, you know mentioned the, at the end there. Well, and there was also a documentary made about the campaign, and as evidence, I submitted his debate, and I submitted the link to the documentary. There we go. You got to keep so. going, though, and you got to be like, and also there's a podcast that mentions the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was at least trying. So I love it, man. I love I wish there was some type of like if, if they're going to do awards like that, they should have one for like best media or best film or best short film or documentary or whatever, because that would be kind of fun. That'd be kind of fun. It, I mean, probably the, a good idea also. But I, yeah, I think that I mean. The competition for best it. podcast would be out of this. I mean, Dave would win, obviously. Or <laughs> maybe now Tom Woods. Tom Woods, Scott Horton. But everyone's got a podcast, yeah. So that that's exactly my point. We uh, we would never win that award. <laughs> um, Wes says, "Hey, Dad." <laughs> hey, <son. laughs> Stephen, welcome to the show, brother. What are you drinking? Glad to be here. Uh, starting out with some Wicked Weed Pernicious. Oh, nice. uh, but got to rep the Georgia brews. So I've got new realm kick flipper after that and you know. Monday night space lettuce after that. Is that any good? I keep seeing that around here. What the Monday night space lettuce. Yeah. Yeah. Gold medal winner in the great American beer fest for double IPA. All that doesn't, right. That doesn't mean it. anything. Yeah. Might, no, it's great. It's, it's, it's great. when it's winning a medal for drinking horse piss. So congratulations. <laughs> Do you not like IPAs? I guess. <laughs> Dude, IPAs is literally just, I mean, isn't the, isn't the joke like, a hipster was tricked into drinking horse piss that he was told was IPA and enjoyed it. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think that's the thing. That, that is the joke. But <laughs> Monday night is also well known for their stouts. They do a great job on their stouts. All right. So I like a good stout. Yeah. All right. Y'all, um, we've had like three episodes in a row where our primary topic has been Israel. And today is, is no different. Um, let's bring up this video. We're going to watch. It's about four minutes long, so buckle in. And uh, yeah, we're going to watch this. Warning that some of the images that you are about to see in this investigation are graphic. Katie Polglaze is out front. It's early morning on February 29th on Al Rashid Road in northern Gaza. Thousands of starving people have gathered here to receive food. But as the aid trucks arrive, this happens. The night would become known as the Flower Massacre. By morning, over a hundred would be dead. In one of the single biggest mass casualty events of this conflict, CNN investigated this incident, obtaining never seen before videos of that night, collecting evidence from 22 eyewitnesses and tracing the aid itself all the way to a Muslim charity in the UK. It was the IDF that was then responsible for safely delivering these vital supplies. But we found they opened fire on unarmed, starving Palestinians at close range as the aid arrived. Their explanation for the tragedy using this drone video was a stampede that caused soldiers to fire warning shots in the air. They later admitted to firing some shots directly at so-called suspects who approached them. But the IDF footage is incomplete. It cuts between crowds surrounding the trucks and bodies lying on the ground. Even this reveals they were firing in a densely packed area, likely to cause severe bloodshed. CNN requested the full footage from the IDF, but it was denied. Ahmad uh, Abu Watfa yeah, was amongst the starving That's Palestinians. Right. And <laughs> Bad news has never sounded so interesting. Yeah. That accent just... Laid it on there, man. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure those supplies were just a Hamas base. What? Well, so uh, he, here's the thing, though, and and this is I, I'm just telling you what's going to be used to justify all this. Yeah, that is a war zone. 
Yep. Israel is in an existential war. They have spent the last 10 to 15 years telling the world in front of the UN, in front of the US Congress, in front of any parliament that would host them, in front of the world courts, we are fighting for our existence. That said, and it's been well known for the whole planet now for 15, 20 years or however long the strife has been going on, but in particular, I know for at least the last 15 years, uh, it's a war zone and the people still elect to live there. I don't know about you guys, I love my hometown, but if it becomes a war zone, I'm going to put up with it for maybe two tops and I'm out of there. You yes. know, I don't love it that much. I won't even put up with it for a whole year. I don't think, <laughs> you know, if my friends are just getting shot, getting coming out of the grocery store, like that's, you know, it's time to get out of there. Why are you still there? And yep. then, you know, for the Palestinian side, you guys elected Hamas to lead your government. So, they are a terrorist organization and you voted uh, them in. Like 20 so, years ago though. So, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I'm not saying that totally we responsible justifies. for George Bush and Obama. I was going to bring like, up a similar. They murdered way more people and we elected them. But they didn't run and on the we... platform of we're going to wipe these people off the map. You know, that's it's, that's and, in, like that's in the Hamas charter. And it, yeah, I mean, if, if you get down into who like it wasn't a unanimous election, like the, some of the people voted against electing Hamas. I and so the like children sure didn't vote. Well, of course, that, that, that's the thing. Like most of the people who are alive now, like mo a lot, most of the kids and, and young adults who are alive now weren't even able to vote at the time. So they're suffering consequences that their idiot parents chose to chose to take. Um, and man, I, yeah, th th there are definitely both sides to this this video, because on the one hand, they're delivering aid to a whole bunch of people who need food. Um, and it is the opposing military, which is, it's just a strange situation, but hungry people and people who are desperate do desperate things and can at least, I, I don't know, mobs why do, mobs do crazy things. The footage, well, that's, that's if the it issue. was truly a desperate Dude, that's that's, that's always the issue. Like, yeah. if, if you just release all the footage, everybody can can decide for themselves based See, on I, what actually happened. I hear what you're saying, but it's yeah. still it's super fishy to me because they won't release the footage. Well, that that's why I can't give them the benefit of the doubt because it, if they released everything, then I would be like, okay, it, it makes sense if if all these people stormed the trucks, started hurting soldiers who were just trying to give them food. Right. It makes it that makes way more sense than. But then you would think that they would be like, "Hey, here, look at this! Like, this is why we did what we did." Like, yeah, but so, I, which I think is it, why I don't I think, think it comes down to because I've seen these kinds of drop offs before. That like they've they happen in war zones all over the place, and like mm. where civil wars are happening, where um, warlords are controlling certain areas, they they'll bring in all this food, and the people will storm it, um, and they'll punch each other, kick each other. Everybody's fighting for like whatever food they can grab. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I'm sure it does. I'm just saying in this instance, I wonder why if it looked even remotely close to that and there was that like gray area of justification, why wouldn't they just then show the footage? So. Well, because yeah. it looks awful. And that's it's yeah. it's the battle tactics of each side on full display. So Hamas is going for the optics. Yeah. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What is the public opinion going to think about videos being released, certain news stories being released? Keep in mind, too, the trendy thing is to support the Palestinians in all this. Mm -hmm. You know, Hamas is cool. Hamas is progressive. Israel's the bad guy because that's who my grandparents like. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's. I mean, you, you see the rallies all over this country. Um, you know, if you go to church, mass, synagogue, or mosque in this country, it's been talked about since October particularly. And it's, it's the younger folks, you know, 15 to 35 that are like, Hey, you know, Israelis back off. They're the ones that are wrong here. So there's this growing trend for that, particularly in the UK, you know? And so that's the guys, a lot of the folks that are signing up to deliver food to that part of the Gaza Strip are there to support Hamas. You know, the, I mean, there are some genuine humanitarians. Don't get me wrong on that. Yeah. But a lot of people signing up to go over there are going over there to thumb the eye of Israel. Yeah. And meanwhile, they're fighting a war. They're not following the Geneva conventions. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, know, Grumpy, Grumpy has a great question. 
Um, why would they use the IDF to deliver the food? That 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 that's, that's they, yeah. That's the I don't idea think they question. were. Were they? Was it the IDF delivering like the food, or was there. the IDF standing on the side watching it? I yeah. I thought the IDF was delivering the food. That's why, from, why does the U.S. Army build schools? <laughs> yeah. to bomb them and build them. You know, like why, why, you know, why, why, <laughs> why do we build infrastructure over there? Uh, you yeah. Know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I from the article and the video that i watched it seemed like the idf were the ones in those trucks delivering the food so i'm not sure if if that's been confirmed but that's what they made it out to be um which yeah that's a great question why are soldiers delivering a bunch of food um to people that they're at war consistently with. bombing yeah yeah they are at war with the people as well you yeah know, that's one of those things like make no mistake you know if you call yourself palestinian and you're over there in that area advocating for a Palestinian state yeah. to be carved out of Israel's borders. <laughs> they are at war with you. Yeah. And if you're still there, you you have to know it at this point. Mm -hmm. The article says that it was a convoy from Uma Welfare Trust, a Muslim relief and development charity mm -hmm. based in Bolton, Northern England. Yeah. There you go. So I assume they were driving the trucks and that IDF was just there. I, man, that is not the, that's not what I gathered, but you could be right. I could be wrong. I don't know. Either way, if the <clears throat> if they weren't in the trucks, that makes it worse. That makes it worse for them because if their lives weren't in danger and they weren't getting attacked and these people are just trying to get food out of then they'd be putting the aid workers lives at risk, too, by firing indiscriminately yeah. into a crowd. Well, like, they already did that. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they with, already did that. Uh, so that that, other... that's already off their bingo card. They didn't need to do that. You know, they just now they just want to kill innocent civilians. Um, yeah, no, it's it's just a completely messed up situation. And like, I I don't pretend to know all the inner workings or the history of what's been happening over in that area for centuries and centuries and centuries. Like, I'm not an expert. I don't. Honestly, uh, the only the only reason we bring any of this up is because America is freaking supporting this freaking war and yeah. my tax dollars are going to it. And I have no interest in my dollars going to pay to murder people who are just trying to get food like that's insane. Right. Um, right. And that, that's literally the only reason we cover things like this, because we're the ones paying for this. We probably paid for some of those bullets that killed those people um it, it's just a horrendous situation i don't know uh, yeah that, those that, will be the people training our cops before long <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and last thing on this it says that they have first denied that the idf was even there so i don't think they were driving the trucks like okay. it'd be hard to deny they were there if <laughs> if they were IDF they were trucks. driving it in. <laughs> well, then, but also when you know the story story's changing, right? So it's yeah. Well, we weren't there. Well, we just shot in the air. Ah, we just shot some. Yeah, we just shot in the air and a hundred people died. That's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, you know, you start. They need to it. sight those whole... rifles in, man. That's bad. Yeah. It's the whole, you know. <laughs> well, that's not happening. Oh, well, just a little bit. Oh, actually, it's a good thing. <laughs> trend that we keep seeing on on everything these days. oh totally totally well yeah like on one hand i hate seeing the innocent people die right but, you know because they're just they're trying to get food but on the other hand they probably deserved it right uh well i mean <laughs> just i'm just kidding i'm literally well, I, just kidding <laughs> consider all the sources here you know because again you know these aid groups are coming from areas where they're having parades these pro-palestinian parades you know Mm. Uh, yeah, but just, the IDF controls all the aid going in, and they'll they'll hold up aid because tent poles are too thick. Well, like, sure, and, and and I'm not yeah. saying that the IDF are totally innocent. I'm not saying the the, the government of Israel is totally innocent. I've I've got my problems with them, and they've showed us time and again that they'll do whatever it takes to get the upper hand. Um, but just consider, we know how bad the news is here. Yeah. So we know most of the people that are on international news level broadcasting types, yeah, they're going to favor Hamas. They're going to they're going to skew the optics any way they can um, to to favor Hamas because uh, you know they haven't liked Israel for quite a while now. Mm. Um, so it, it's you get you got to just before you hop on one train or the other, 
innocent people dying horrible. Uh, but Israel's fighting a war, and it's really odd that these videos are coming out now two, three times a week, and you never see any Hamas folks in the crowd. Yeah, that is that is pretty strange. You never see any weapons. You never see right. anything threatening. Yeah. Um, you also what never see. You never see American news cover it. Yeah. Ever. You only yeah. like I. Every time I see it, it's like CNN International. You know, it's mm. it's somebody with an accent covering it. It's it's never covered here in the states. Um, and yeah, it's because people just have this fear of speaking out against Israel for some insane reason like it, it makes no sense that that you can't stick it's almost to like they control people. everything it's almost like they control everything <laughs> 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 yeah it's yeah, just it's, it's just wild it's man another, it's another country right i mean it's another country and another government and uh yeah. you know i can i can criticize any government i want you're darn right and that's what i do yep i, I mean, criticize all of them Every single one, because they all suck. Some worse than others, but uh, they all suck. <laughs> all right. Anybody else got anything to say about this topic? Sweet. Um, we're going to move on to Spike Cohen beats David Hogg. All right. For those who don't know, Spike Cohen debated. I, I have all these tabs. Zach, you don't got to look for them. Um, Spike Cohen debated David Hogg, who was a survivor of the Parkland shooting, right? Down in, yeah. is it Florida? Florida, yeah. 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 Um, he was a survivor of that shooting, and he's ever since been an um, advocate for gun control. And uh, for some unknown reason, he decided to, decided to sit down with Spike Cohen and have a debate, which is not the person that you want to be debating on pretty much anything, I would think. Um, but he did. Um, and I will say in the first, in the first five minutes in his opening statements, he said, I want this to be just a conversation. I didn't bring any notes. So th let's just talk. And it went over to Spike and Spike holds up a big, thick in like binder full of information. <laughs> it's like, I brought notes. <laughs> it was, the, it was basically that from then on. Um, so let's watch. We're going to have three clips from this. Um, the first one's Spike, the second one's David, and the third one is a question near the end. So here we go. I shouldn't have to explain to everyone in here what the history of the majority deciding what the minority is or is not allowed to do look like. By the way, part of what that looks like is gun control. In the Dred Scott decision in 1857, Chief Justice Taney said, well, of course we can't treat black people like people in this country. If we did, they'd be able to own firearms and carry them wherever they wanted. <laughs> Gun control is actually one of the best examples of what happens when you let a majority population decide that a minority population shouldn't be allowed to exercise some of their rights. It looks like a large group of racist white people telling black people you're not allowed to own firearms for your safety. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That, that oh, was yeah. Racism card. phenomenal. Are you? Cause that, that's the, that's the kind of stuff that, that those left wingers will listen to, you know, I like, think he's oh, yeah. playing to the audience. Well, I've never heard anyone make that particular point actually though. So it, it floats around, but it's a, it's a good point when you're in the left wing audience. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's for a, sure. It's, um, I thought he did fantastically bringing that up and it's and absolutely how the NRA got started too. Like wasn't that their original charter? Oh, I don't know. I don't care about the NRA. Well, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. They've obviously eroded from their original purpose. But I... What do you mean? You mean them advocating to just enforce the current gun laws is okay? Like, that's, know, they've that's, endorsed that's not... every gun law that's ever passed. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, right did, you see, did you see uh, uh, Brandon has submitted new federal regulations on transfers of firearms? Yeah, I saw that. He submitted them. They're, I mean... Who knows if they'll pass, man? Like it's well, it's, I mean, it's submitted for to the federal register, so there's a comment period, and then they have to pretend that they've answered your questions, right? And then they just put it in there anyway. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see because it, it it affects uh, gun shows, right? And just basically any private sales, private around. transfers. Yeah, yeah. freaking a man. How are they going to regulate private transfers? Uh, good, good I question. Um, there's going to be a camera. There's just going to be a camera following you around all day long, Stephen, wherever you go, <laughs> even into the bathroom. 
Um, it's yeah. going to get everything. So I carry it in my pocket. It's called my phone. Tighten it up, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember what a success the war on drugs was. Now we'll have the war on private gun sales. I'm sure oh, it's yeah. going to go great. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna it's gonna go wonderfully. You know, in 60 years when it's still going on, we'll we'll look <laughs> back and say, man, that was a huge success. <laughs> um, all right, here is David a little bit later on um, making a point. So I. I I did agree with some things that David said and, and he and Spike agreed on a bunch. Um, mm. And it was interesting because David, I didn't know that he, um, his dad was an FBI agent and he grew up shooting guns. So that was, that was new information for me. Um, yeah. His dad's a fed and he's doing that. That's uh, completely normal. Oh yeah. Totally normal. And uh, he said multiple times he has, he would have no intention ever on, on taking away people's guns who already have them which was interesting to hear. Um, he said he just wants, I think his main goal from, from what I gathered, his main goal is to get mentally ill people unable to purchase firearms. This but, is and it's oh, also because how do you, well, he also, that? yes, well, that's the point. That's the point. He also mentioned in there that uh, the only thing he wants is, uh, is to, that uh, gun control be treated like Obamacare and we do it. We pass what Massachusetts has. Yeah, he's obsessed with Massachusetts. Spike had so many good points about eight of the 10 lowest homicide rates in the country are states with very loose gun laws. And he, uh, David just repeatedly brought up Massachusetts, which is one of the strictest, but it's also in the top 10. But there's only yeah. one. <laughs> What's so, the tie in with Obamacare there? Because the Obamacare was based off of what Romney had passed in Massachusetts when he was governor. Yeah. And that had something to do with guns? Well, he, he's saying that like Obamacare copied what Romney did, passed for health care in Massachusetts, uh, he wants the federal government to copy what Massachusetts did. Yeah. So on uh, that also, which right. is just like, yeah, what an astounding success Obamacare was. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of the like, the mentally, you know, whatever like sick or whatever people want to say like mentally unstable there's a, an example with pilots where okay. they won't let you be a pilot if you have again just worded the same kind of way like you know a history of mental illness or whatever and so people that either are pilots or want to be a pilot a lot of the times won't seek the help that they need right and are just you know a ticking time bomb how is that better you well, know and it, yeah. things, for things like the, for things like depression because yeah oh, right you might just be depressed because yeah so like yeah because like, they can pull your pilot license if you yep. seek help for depression yep. it's yeah it's like it's like how we got into this space with ptsd and everything else because you know veterans are uh hesitant to go seek treatment for that because you don't know what list you're going to end up on yeah, or yeah. you were made to look weak or if you were still serving they were running people out on that instead of you know actually treating people so yeah so a lot of the times that particular way of thinking backfires and it's super ambiguous and vague and people can just yes. be like oh once you were on prozac and it's like oh no gun for you you know what i mean like that well, doesn't i'm just yeah, worried and, about and, that and like you said like who <clears throat> defines mentally ill or mentally unstable because who the freaking how, yeah. head the of the expert. fbi the head of the fbi labeled libertarians as domestic terrorists like, there you go. Wow. see there you go well, and then I, you got uh was it oppositional defiance disorder added to the dsm-5 it's oh Arizona. is that what did that actually officially happen yes because I, I heard that we're pushing for that at one point. I think Canada started making noise about that first, of course. Or oh, something. shocking. Shocking. It's yeah. Canada. All right. Let's yeah. watch this clip. Let's watch this clip. Well, I think it's pretty. I, I, you're probably going to not be surprised by my answer. It's the guns. Uh, the fact of the matter is we have the high, pretty much the highest rate of firearm ownership of almost any country, at least any large country in the world. Um, naturally, when that happens, you're going to have more instances of gun violence, of gun suicide, and mass shootings as well. Um, and how much time do I have for this one? It's two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, great. Um, and look, you know, the other day, I don't know if anybody, anybody saw a, a different presidential candidate, um, RFK Jr., really amazing guy, obviously. Um, he was talking about how the reason why gun violence is so prevalent in the United States is because of antidepressants um, and uh, violent video games. I didn't know that America was the only country where people took antidepressants. 
Um, That's him trying to be funny. Video games. Yeah. The difference is in these other countries, it's a thing. hell of a lot harder <laughs> to get a damn gun, frankly. That's why these shootings don't have nearly as much gun violence. Of there course, there was a That's why in the UK you'll just be killed with a hammer or a bat. Well. But the reality is, it is a lot cool. harder. Even if you're but also, somebody, what's, what's you know, the prescription rate on, the time, you know, on David, gun laws SSRIs and antidepressants gun laws. But that, in the U.S.? So they pass that. that it seems like they pass that stuff out like candy. The shooter at my high school yeah. was a 19-year-old, and he was a criminal, but he was not a criminal mastermind. He was a 19-year-old that was able to legally go out and obtain an AR-15 with a high-capacity magazine and murder my classmates. He was, did not have connections to the cartel or the black market, right? Obviously, in some instances, people are still going to be able to get guns, but an instance like that, where somebody repeatedly threatened to shoot up a high school, not only should they have not been able to get an AR-15, and I don't believe that actually infringes on anybody's rights, I think it actually protects our rights to safety. In the first right place. to safety, drink. Right? I think oh yeah, because the A and AR stands for assault, right? right? It's not a world where everybody yeah. you know, has their firearms taken away or anything like that. That is not what I want. Also, that would be logistically impossible and constitutionally impossible. All right, so a few things to unpack there. One, the there, nobody has a right to safety. That's not it's not a human right. You have a right to defend yourself, which he is trying to take away from a lot of people. Um, Hannah brings up a very good point. Um, Alden's right. How do you legislate the mental health element without making it? So, for example, a single mom with an anxiety disorder or whatever can't defend her house and kids. Hundred yeah. percent. And another element um, of that, if you get treated for depression or anxiety, you can't buy life insurance. Wow. So, and what he's talking wow. about with like yeah. the, I didn't know that by the way. That's interesting. I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah. they will straight uh, up because like, they uh, won't uh, want to cover you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes They're sense. Like, we we want to know that you're cured of that before we talk about this. Right. And I say it makes sense, not like I agree. I'm just saying I get that, you know, from their perspective. Right. But um, the other thing that he's saying is like, oh, like someone that's made threats to shoot up a high school or something. So now we're getting into the speech thing. And also, someone has to be the person to say that qualifies as threatening speech or whatever. So who's to say that someone can't get you know into position eventually and go like, oh, someone is like you know whatever anti-vax or some other crazy thing? Put that on the list too, even though I might agree with someone that's constantly threatening to bomb their high school, maybe shouldn't have a gun. But legislatively, that begins gray and complicated when you start oh, when saying you, someone's when you make gonna... an actual threat like hey here's a target and i'm going to do something right that that you know spike brings up that point in the debate later on that yeah, crosses yeah. into the realm of hit criminal behavior right already and it's a failure of the criminal justice system to not step in and say that's what it is uh, yeah you've, exactly you've, we already have laws for that yeah. Like... yeah we already have laws for that that does not mean you need to give somebody the authority to be able to decide who gets weapons and who doesn't because yeah. that, that leads down a very dark path, which we're going to see with the next clip. Um, well, and did the Parkland yeah. shooter, did he actually purchase the AR or did he steal it from his father? I have no idea. That's a good, his father wasn't in the I picture. I kind of remember that too. Because I, don't I, know I, his, I remember yeah. like it was in the house already. It wasn't like it, it might've been in that. It's hard to remember because you, because the big story on taking it was, uh, was Sandy hook. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, now, where he got it, I can't remember, but I was pretty sure he was raised single mother. So I don't think there was a father in All the right. picture. Okay. Wikipedia well, well, says Cruz legally purchased an AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle from a Coral Springs gun store. Got it. Okay. And uh, he did pass right. a background check. Okay. So mm. on your on your last clip here, I'm guessing you're going the Lily, Lily Tang. Uh, on this and not the guy who told uh told hog to stack up yeah no you you can you can mention that one <laughs> no, that was a great well, that was a great moment in the debate um but here is um they did questions from the audience towards the end of the debate and uh here's the one that's getting the most amount of coverage hi my name is uh, lily tang williams and um, welcome to my live free or die state Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived mm -hmm. communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after yes. so the communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his uh, cultural revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me a gun owner tonight? Our government in the U.S., in D.C., 
will never, never become a tyrannical government. Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never, never. And you should go to China to see how gun control works for dictatorship of CCP. Can I, dude, turn the mic off. Yeah, he pulled it away. He just pulled it away. Yeah, he pulled it. I am extremely sorry. His human mic stands not even doing his Dave, job. Hang on, hang on. David does a good job responding. Agriculture for one, the cultural revolution. He said he's, he apologized for her and for the things and that happened I would do everything in, in my power to stop that from ever happening in the United States of America. I'm not advocating for you having your gun taken away. I, I'm genuinely not. I know it may be hard for you to believe that. But I'm not advocating for any law-abiding like, citizen to have that happen to them. What I believe is that the real danger that we have in America right now is all of these people that increasingly believe that elections <laughs> that are not he real, knows, he knows that are denying doing. the results mm -hmm. of them, being heavily armed, and repeatedly saying that they need to overthrow a government because they've been fed lies and misinformation. That is really what I fear becoming a tyrannical government. I also fear the fact that in some ways we've had multiple violations of our rights, not you know, excluding everything in this conversation, just going to the Fourth Amendment and the Patriot Act or, or the FISA Act, the Foreign Intelligence and Surveillance Acts. Those are severe violations of our civil rights and liberties that personally I view right now are a far greater threat to, to our freedom than red flag laws. All right. So, look, I, after watching this debate, I have far more respect for David Hogg than I did before. I don't necessarily agree with him on a lot of things, but I do think if that, it's wild because I think if that Parkland shooting hadn't happened, he would be far more libertarian than, than uh, he is now um, because he's against, you know, FISA, he's against uh, Patriot Act, he's against all this kind of stuff. And he doesn't want to take, he says he doesn't want to take anybody's guns away. And he That's seems the hardest part for me to understand on that is he's, he's stressing that he doesn't want to. And then he says, well, I want to do what Massachusetts does. It bans you from, ha from having, yeah. you know, it, I think there's some cognitive dissonance happening within his brain. And I think, look, the fact that he didn't bring any notes and didn't bring any research or resources or anything to the debate makes it so that all all of his arguments or most of them originate from an emotional place rather than a factual place well we saw that right so um yeah. spike would go hey i've got the data on this here's a chart that shows you know there's no correlation here and he would go well we know for a fact that there is a correlation and spike would be like <laughs> yeah. there's there's We're no looking correlation. Right at it, like, yeah. <clears throat> Look at the chart. If there was a correlation, it would be going like this up and to the right. Yeah. It's, it's all yeah. over the he, place. He definitely um definitely downplayed statistics and facts. It was it was kind of wild to watch him do that. And um well, then he tried to like play the weekend. Oh well, this says it was from Wikipedia, and Spike's like, Yeah, but I pulled all that for, but I like checked the sources on that and it's just, yeah, maybe I pulled the chart from Wikipedia, but like I got the, I double checked all the numbers from the actual source, which, which I have right here. <laughs> so, um, um, so Hannah, Hannah asked, can we get an update on David Hogg's pillow company? <clears throat> um, yeah, we can actually. Uh, Does he really have a pillow? Gun? David Hogg says he is no longer part of the progressive pillow company he started. <laughs> What's the progressive pillow? It was the anti my pillow. Who's the uh, Republican? It was our pillow. Oh. Our pillow. Yeah. <laughs> Part of it was good pillow. Good pillow okay. venture. There okay. we go. I wish it were like we pillow. <laughs> <laughs> we pillow. Um, but, yeah. pillow. The uh, other really uh, oh, taco pillow. Other part that's standing out to me is when he tried to twist uh, the meaning of live free or die. I don't and remember that. So, yeah, so he actually got corrected by like the British guy who might have spoke first on it. Okay, but he's like, uh, who the first guy, one of the first people who to ask a question. But yeah, he uh, he was like, we have the right to live free, or you might die. 
<laughs> it's basically what he was getting at. Like, were they in New well, Hampshire? If, if people this... have this, they can kill you, and you yeah. won't be living. Yeah. And then the uh, and then the, uh, my, uh, he had an, a British accent, and he's like, "Well, actually, that comes from General John Stark." And uh, you know, the rest of the quote is, "You know, there's a fate worse than death," and blah blah, blah and whatever mm-hmm. else. Meaning, like, yeah, if you come to take our take our freedom, then yeah. we will die defending it. Not <laughs> we're gonna, yeah. you know. So it was a. Uh, I thought it was, was pretty clear. Was a, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah, he, he like twisted it all in circles on that. It was Which, something. Honestly, that's what lefties do. They they, they twist meanings of words. Um, like the definition of things have just gone completely out the window for so many things. Um, like reclassifying, reclassifying. Oh, like Anti-vaxxer has and, always meant anyone who opposes mandatory vaccine. or vaccine well yeah and, and vaccine has always meant mrna yeah. gene therapy that um, doesn't necessarily stop the spread <laughs> right <laughs> that's what it means for sure for sure you you don't you, you get your flu vaccine every year not your flu shot right um, <laughs> the flu won't be as bad if you get it yeah oh, totally totally yeah yeah that's exactly right by the way the uh wikipedia also lists countries by antidepressant consumption Okay. And Iceland is number one. But then there's they have nine months of darkness. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So no one then there's a nice little there's a note that says the US is not included in these, but if it were, it would be number one or second highest. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) that that means absolutely nothing. Why wasn't the US included? Now is that overall or is that per capita? That that's the real question because they, they made some capita. of those points during the debate. Because Iceland's only three hundred thousand people. Yeah. yeah, daily dosage per one thousand inhabitants okay. per day. That's How per many capita. more people do you think a year in this country are killed by something like, like texting and driving or medical malpractice or some other th- fucking errant thing, coconuts yeah. falling or whatever, a than lot. someone with a history of mental illness buying a gun Mm. and why are we so obsessed with just the concept of this one thing even though there are people dying in many other instances much higher numbers but there's like a drama about the gun thing and if people really wanted to help people i really don't even think this is the best this mental illness should uh if we should focus on that as a way to you know preclude you from harming others uh, then let's focus on the assault pin of legislation. There we you know, go. Where there one we signature go. can cause the death of a thousand brown kids. There and we go. God knows what you're taking in the middle of the night on those, uh, you know, what kind of bender you're on while you're on these late night legislative sessions. Yep. Especially like if Rand Paul's doing a filibuster <clears throat> and you've been in the chamber for 18 <laughs> hours, you know, what, what's it's being cocaine. run across the street to prop you up <laughs> so you can vote yay or nay? Yeah. Yep. Speaking yeah. of like. And overall, <laughs> guns save way more lives. You know, even without ever firing yes. a shot, just people having a gun the saves lives. The, that, to yeah, the, the issue, like, we don't even know the number. Debate. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And the, the issue with that is, is well, you, it's hard to the prove CDC? the negative. Like, it's hard to prove yeah. that, you know. Because right. the only measurable study, thing here is dead. Like I thought that study on that one came out of the CDC, which uh, I believe Hogg also said he wanted an independent third party like the CDC or NIH to run studies on. I don't uh, want the CDC touching like anything. Yeah, I, I mean, know that was the joke. That, 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 that was the joke that, I, that we were laughing at at the watch <laughs> party was that he uh, he's like we need an independent third party to to do the research on. Oh, this, like, like NIST CDC or, or CDC NIH. or WHO or some other so, per, yeah organization. The same red flag you. Yes, let's have them yeah. aggregate the gun data. Please. <laughs> exactly. Oh right, this just popped in my head. I don't know if you guys saw this. Did you see? Uh, I believe it's Chicago. Is trying to sue Glock because people are putting Glock switches on Glocks. What? Wait, what? Say that whole thing again. The, the Chicago, I believe it's Chicago, is trying to sue Glock because the city are putting, of Chicago is trying to sue Glock because of Glock switches, which aren't even made by Glock and wow. are illegal machine guns. What? So a third party like augment kind of device that's made by someone else and they're getting that's made Glock illegally getting by someone else yeah by they're trying a to city? Claim. you i think yeah. you mean it's made heroically by someone else 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, and suing them won't co- stop a single shooting, but it might make them some money. Why don't they sue that company that makes that item? Even if they wanted to, because companies don't make that item, except maybe in China. I think you might be able to. Oh, so they the hashtag drill because they're hole. they're illegal machine guns. But uh, yeah. just having it, even if it's not installed as an illegal machine gun, like they're highly illegal. But I think the claim the claim they were trying to make is, out. well. <laughs> The claim they were trying to make is, uh, well, no one else's firearm design allows for these. Why does Glocks? Or someone just made it for the most popular <laughs> right. weapon yeah. around because they're trying to make money on this thing, and they're not going to make it for the rarest gun. Yeah, that's that's yeah. like blaming us for some stupid crap Grumpy Gnome says online. <laughs> like, <laughs> Grumpy yeah. Gnome, stop like just here. Sawed off shotguns, bro. Like, We're the most that? popular podcast, so of course he's here. <laughs> We're getting sued because he's making sawed offs, man. Like, God, freaking damn. Grumpy, what is wrong yeah, so, with you, man? It's it's wild. Some of the some of the stretches that these uh, politicians politicians will put themselves in on some of this stuff but yeah yeah I saw it would like, be chicago well because for some reason well i don't know why but, i almost um, choked on chicago style pizza so i should sue chicago then i agree because, they're the ones who made it yeah the whole city is guilty because of the style <laughs> yeah. of pizza because well, i'd pulled three feet of cheese pizza. out of my neck right? well somehow Do even though again, you know <laughs> In reverse. Somehow, <laughs> even possessing you know, even possessing one of those is what up to 10 years for um, an illegal machine gun uh, yeah, like all over oh. let the uh no glocks which is yet you're out you i think on tiktok and whatever else you've just got trends of of kids with glock switches on their glock <laughs> like, i think just it's not as bad to have that flaunting the law like it's upset i love those kids that's awesome so it's not about oh, 10 it's years hilarious. unless you're a constable in pennsylvania right there. Oh, interesting. But making yeah, a glock yeah. switch is not as bad as putting sauce on top of cheese. I'm sorry. But also, I mean, I agree. Um, Chicago style pizza is idiotic. Like, ridiculous. don't put sauce on top of cheese. No, don't do that. That makes no sense. No, you're a moron. I feel <laughs> like a bread casserole. But, yeah, I mean, it's literally, it's like a pizza lasagna. It's, it's a lasagna. It's no, lasagna still has cheese on top. Yeah, it does. But it's about as thick as lasagna. Here's the thing marinara <laughs> is already cooked. You cook it, it's heated, it's sweetened, it's caramelized, all the sugars are caramelized. The cheese needs to cook. You know what I mean? Like it's better browned. Like we never mind. Is, Don't give me a pop tart ravioli. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, you you live you lived closer to Detroit, didn't you? Like I'm a fan of Detroit style pizza. That's some good what stuff. What is Detroit Where? style pizza? It's Read what Where? she said for the audio pizza. people. Um, Hannah says, I think I'm quitting this show because of the Chicago deep dish pizza slander. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Exposed. Jake had pizza at our wedding weekend. That's that is true. It was, <laughs> it, it, it was delicious. <laughs> lasagna. <laughs> I did have lasagna. All right, y'all. It's time for something else. I am not fucking drunk. Well, my teeth are blue. Every pretty girl deserves to go to a ball. This is everything about it's a clam. I love it. I gotta be honest with you. I feel like I'm a little bit too drunk to stand up. On the people's day, ask for. I'm drunk right now. All right, y'all. <laughs> Welcome to Drunkard of the Week. Um, this is, I finally figured out who this was. So it took forever. It actually took my wife coming into the room and being like, is that Jennifer Lewis? I've, I've worked with her. <laughs> so, oh, <no. laughs> so this is, uh, this is an actress. Um, and we'll just play you the clip. Here we go. As soon as he takes the oath, he will have generals walk down the steps of the Capitol. He will take a hammer and break the glass where the Constitution is, and he will tear it up in our faces. Mm. And say, now, I'm the king of the fucking world. (laughs) You will bow down, bitches. He will punish everybody that didn't vote for him. Let me tell y'all how I know this shit. Because I know what mental illness looks like. <laughs> yes, you do. Did you have That mania is unstoppable. <laughs> C 
see. This motherfucker's hit. <laughs> <laughs> But if you don't vote for him, you hate Israel. He didn't come to play. <laughs> we want to be free to do what we want to do. Yeah. <laughs> we want to get loaded. Yeah. And we want to have a good time. It would be like a 10 minute walk to the Constitution. We know Trump's not walking that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I don't know where to start on that. Um, it, I, mean, that is I was, I was partially expecting, uh, the, uh, whoever it was that said that the eclipse was caused by climate change. That was too easy, man. Like that was on the that's the <laughs> lowest hanging fruit of all time. Freaking! How is it? What? Oh, did yes. you not see that clip, Alden? No. It's on the on the Today Show, it was today? No, not today. No, it was on the View. On the, the view. view, of course, the, it's the fucking view. The Whoopi was even view. trying to shut her up. Whoopi was like trying to talk over her. But then, but even Whoopi, Whoopi knows like this is something nonsense. else. Well, then Whoopi <laughs> just, we had no idea what she was talking about either, dude. Right. They were blaming solar eclipse, um, uh -huh. uh, earthquake, and some other completely natural event on on climate change. What the hell does an eclipse have to do with climate change? Yeah, there we go. I don't know, okay, but so it, so apparently David eclipses Hawk... are also racist, according to <laughs> yeah, what? sources. Mm -hmm. Whatever keeps that lady from the sun turns black. How is it racist? Then cops shoot it. So I mean, I don't get it. Look, what's wild, man? Like, what was the moon this lady, lady was, was dead the... serious? I mean, she's an she's she's an actress, so she was being super dramatic. And what was? The was the, the be Hitler the and king. Thing. Hitler never. Hitler was never king. Uh, dude, why are you applying logic to this? <laughs> yeah, don't try to make sense. Of <laughs> no. Um. The, like, she said, "I know what mental illness looks like." And yeah. It's like, yeah. She looks in the mirror, mirror every, every day. Every day. Like. Yeah. <laughs> exactly why? Like you are delusional. The fact that Trump already spent four years in office. And everything was the same. It was relatively. The same, I didn't say yeah. it was good. It was basically the same. Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the bad people freaking out every day, which is hilarious. Yeah. And like some lot, really man. really entertaining tweets. It's way more entertaining when Trump's president, for sure. Yeah. Like, like it's uh, way more entertaining. It still like it, leads we, to nothing. Like I I remember we played right another after... clip on this. I think we played a clip a while back. I think when Jake wasn't on the show about someone else like making predictions like that and they said that trump would shoot the generals <laughs> and shoot melania by the way but so i don't know how these generals are going to be walking down the steps with him when he's already shot them so. and also I, like he's shot melania one, a lot like hi, like you know walking to you know where what the national archives where the constitution is and tearing it up I mean, Congress has already basically done that without physically doing it, and this <laughs> physical document is what constrains it. Like, I would love a magical for, talisman. I would love for Mordor? that lady. I would love for that lady to tell me any rights or anything in the Constitution that she would lose if it was torn up. Mm. Just, j just give me one thing. I, I guarantee you, she couldn't do it. Guaranteed. Well, and like possessing the actual document gives you control over it. It's not, it, I didn't even understand that premise. Yeah, like it's the ring. That's why. That's why the, right. the archives have all the power. <laughs> so in our thread, I didn't see anything about the eclipse thing, but I saw the the moon lady, where she said the moon was like a gaseous body or whatever. Like Sheila Jackson just, Lee, man, that lady is <laughs> full of them. Wait, oh, Sheila what? Jackson Lee said what? The yeah the the moon was made up primarily of gases like it's oh, a gas giant planet no. or something and, and then fa and then like after a little more speaking and fumbling around uh, she blew a whistle I guess to usher some people out to a field to go look at the eclipse a dog and whistle then, like she could not get the glasses on her head <laughs> she could not figure out how to get the glasses on like she even looked around and asked somebody for help and the guy was like I ain't helping you with that Dude. walked off. There were so many contestants for Drunkard of the Week this week. There was one, <laughs> there was Jennifer Lewis, the one who won. There was uh, um, the chick from The View. Right. I guess there was Sheila Jackson Lee. There was also Kamala again saying that, did she you be on know, did you know that until the year 2022, the women's college basketball teams couldn't have a bracket? <laughs> they yeah. weren't allowed 
to have March Madness brackets? <laughs> There had to be a there had to be an amendment to the constitution to allow <laughs> basketball practice. Yeah, like it's the masters or Dude, something. That's been going on since nineteen eighty two. Like <laughs> maybe that's Man what had to walk out in front of them waving oh, a flag. Hannah with the spicy comment here. No no one's ever been to the moon, so how would we know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to get out of that rabbit hole? Hannah, hey. bravo. No, we're not going down that rabbit hole tonight. Hey, but, but Northrop Grumman has the contract for a railroad up there. Yeah, somebody lost their mind on a... Uh, I watched some podcast this week. I don't remember what it was, but somebody lost, just started screaming, being like, you don't have health care, but they're building railways on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Oh man, it was. But terrible. would the railways on the moon be a government contract? Yeah, North, that... Northrop okay. Grumman just got the government contract. Oh, okay. yeah, they got it. They got it from DARPA. Yeah. Oh, DARPA. All right. It'll be it'll be the first time anybody's ever been on the moon, so we'll that'll be fun. That'll be fun <laughs> yeah, to watch. I, I guess I guess we're gonna set up a strip mining operation for that. Oh that, god, I uh, thought you were gonna say a strip club on the moon. Well, how how <laughs> well, deep do you too. have? Yeah. That would be more how deep productive. do you have to go to reach the hollow core? Ooh, it's mm. like yeah. I was about to say mile. it could be mostly gases. I think you said this earlier, Nick. If, if it's, it's hollow, hollow, it's full of gas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll find out when we start strip how mining. Else stay floating up there. What's that? What do you say? Good point. I said, how else does it stay floating up there? <laughs> <laughs> well, when they ran stuff into it, one of the Apollo missions crashed into the it. They said it rang effect. like a bell. It rang yeah. like a bell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that definitely wasn't their equipment or their ears ringing. No, no, neither one of those not. things. No, it legitimately so, is weird, the moon in general. Is it? We could have a whole... Are, are yeah, you sure? It, yeah. Is it different than every other moon on Earth? I mean, on uh, in the solar system? <laughs> It, it's on actually Earth. quite the same as everything. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Is it different? How different is it than it's other the moons hugest, in the solar system? It's the largest satellite in proportion to its orbital body, like of any moon that we know of. Alden, are you going to propose some conspiracy theory where the United States government put the moon there? No, no. This okay. was long, long before did. the United States got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Nibiru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I can't, if we I can't to go get, down. If you wanted no. to get... No, no, no. I can't you, go you down wanna... the moon rabbit hole. <laughs> you, you, no, no, no. One last rabbit hole, because I was literally listening to this the other day. I was listening to a podcast that I was into the conspiracy stuff, and uh, they were covering um, some of the beliefs of the Nation of Islam as far as aliens and stuff. Hmm. And I believe yep. they were saying that aliens help the Apollo 13 uh, astronauts back. And if you say otherwise, uh, uh, it's your technology that's uh, that's coming up with these lies. I've never heard that one. I've never heard that one either. I'm very glad I haven't heard that. Oh, one. It, it's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, don't, don't you, yeah, watch your technology. Well, it could right. be Doctor Yacoub's, um, you know, satellite or his ship or whatever. Dr. Yacoub, who invented white people. What? <laughs> the nation of Islam. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Bef before we go to that our next topic. That was a part of it, too. Yes. <laughs> but before we go to our next topic, wanted to let y'all know, yes, we are, in fact, um, getting merch for the show. This will this is the first mock-up for our threat to democracy hat. <laughs> nice. Um, this will be available in hats, shirts, maybe some other items as well. We'll also have a few other um, awesome slogans put on different um, attire. And we got all sorts of colors. We got orange, we got pink, we got the MAGA red. Um, I like that the, anybody wearing a red hat is just automatically MAGA now. Mm -hmm. What a co op of a color. He literally <laughs> co opted a color. It's That's, wild. That, and it, it's actually amazing. Downtown Atlanta right? once. I was wearing a red hat and some guy ran up to me, saw the hat was a Bubba Gump shrimp company hat. <laughs> and he was like, Oh good. Otherwise, like I was going to do something like, boom, so you were going to really? attack somebody on the street yeah. if it was a MAGA hat. Like, good. Jeez, man, that's wild. Um, but yeah, stoked to have some, our merch finally coming out. Pretty excited about it. So um, make sure uh, you tune in next week. We I should be announcing that it's uh, online and ready to be purchased. Do I have? To... All right. What'd you say, this Nick? Be good. Yeah, Nick dropped off there. Nick, you kind of went away for a second. Do I have to buy my own merch, or will I have have some sets for me? 
<laughs> I uh, I will likely buy everyone one piece of merch, and then you have to buy all your own stuff. After I like that. that rule. All right, yeah, <laughs> choose wisely. Yeah, I'm glad to have yours yeah, custom fair. tailored, Nick. All right, yeah, I gotta hop and go to nerd meeting. Noggin. All right, nerd, have fun at nerd meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most normal hats don't fit. <laughs> I have a big head too, so I'm the same way. But now you just have a lot of hair. Yeah. I have a big head. That I promise. Too. Is it? Re- is that true? Yeah, that too. All right, y'all. Um, well, Zach, stay stay in the chat because. Uh, It's trivia time, everybody. Um, that is not what I'm supposed to be putting up there. Give me one second. <laughs> Zach, you want to? Uh-oh. We're... Oh, yeah. Stephen go. Stephen go. <laughs> we, can't, uh, we can't play until Steven gets back. Yeah, that would be mono y mono. Yeah, mono y mono. We did that. Have we done that before? It's not... Yeah, me and Zane did it once, I think. It's not a lot of fun. It's, yeah. It's you held your own, though. I think yeah, I won did... that one, actually. Oh, interesting. The one that he he didn't know, it was like very close at the end, and he didn't know the word ambrosia or whatever, and like he made a whole thing about the ambrosia thing later. But <laughs> hey, he's back. Hey, like the trivia. Okay, good. <laughs> Dude, I was not going to uh, start <laughs> it's over, <that>. Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, tonight everyone has a shot, y'all. It's libations trivia without Zane Placey, so. Um, Hopefully he's not in the audience. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's he up to tonight? That's a great question. I think he, I don't remember where he is, but <clears throat> all right. Libations trivia. The categories are this day in history, elite emperors and marmoset. The rules um, audience, you can answer. If you win, um, you're no longer a loser. That's that's basically <laughs> the the prize for this show is uh, eventually I think you win. You might, the opportunity to buy merch. You know? Look, I think eventually, if the audience wins, whoever participated and got correct answers, I think I think a good idea would be to send them merch. So I think that would uh, encourage. Or people. rabbit eye wine. Or rabbit eye wine. Um, yeah. Zane yeah. will save us a ton of money by never losing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, we'll all be cheering for Zane at that point. Uh, all right, y'all. Scoreboard, Zane has seven, Alden has three, Audience has two, Zach has one, Nick has one. Steve, you're still down there at zero, man. Man, you Steve, take a couple weeks off. Um, you got to you gotta start doing Alden's Alden's uh, tactic, which is is halfway through the question, just put your hand up and then just answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think that's where I'm missing is I, I'm actually waiting for the whole question to be read. Yeah, you don't yeah, have to yeah. do that. I can, I can see you out of the corner of my eye. We could do it where... Not- you get a penalty if you're wrong, if you buzz in before the question well, is the, over. The, the penalty is that you don't get to answer again until everybody answers. That's true, that's, I that's guess. That's the penalty. Right. Like that. That's why it was baked in to begin with. Right, right. Is so you can't just be throwing your hand up every two seconds. All right, question number one. On this day in 1814, what leader abdicates his throne? Steven. Uh, 1814. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon wow, is nice. correct. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, sorry, I gotta make y'all a little smaller so I can see Napoleon Bonaparte's <laughs> La Petite Corporal, which was right. a death sentence if you called him that. Really? Yeah, oh, dude was like I four ten. He was really short. He was like is Tom it four ten? Is he was that short? Yeah. That is so short, and they had wow. Joaquin Phoenix play him in the movie. Yeah, that, that's why. Yeah. Like mo- most of his like portraits, he's on horseback. They should have yeah, had Elijah that makes Wood. Sense. You know, like that's that's where they Napoleon had Elijah Wood. Wood. Dude, it would have been a better movie. That movie sucked. Put a Hobbit in there, man. Yeah, that's where Napoleonic syndrome comes from. Is you know, yeah, short yeah. guys get angry. No, I mean, I knew he was like smaller stature, but four four ten is is four ten is short, quite short. small. Yeah, yeah. That was like I mean, my great grandmother's height, like <laughs> for real. Like, I was like twice her Why height. Is that no, so the exact height? He was he was a little dude compared to the rest of his soldiers. All yeah. right, moving yeah. on. Sorry, on this, we got on one this question. day <laughs> in nineteen twenty one, what became the first sport to ever be broadcast over the radio? Stephen, baseball. Incorrect, Zach. 
Hmm. I was going to say baseball. Um, what's another popular sport in 1921? Uh, uh, snooker. No. <laughs> Hannah, you are incorrect. <laughs> uh, derby, horseback riding, or something. No, mm -hmm. tennis is wrong. Golf is wrong. It's open to the floor again, Zach. Okay. What? Croquet. No. Steve. Crockett. Football. No. Alden. Steve. Uh, what? Audience gets it. Oh, boxing oh, makes man. way more sense than it's okay. Johnny v. Johnny. Johnny Ray v. Johnny Dundee. What a, what wow. a great first sport to be broadcast of. That over sounds very 1921 or whatever it was. Yeah, 1921 is correct. Johnny Ray versus Johnny whatever. Oh, you took it Johnny away before. Dundee. Yeah. Dundee, Dundee, yeah. All right. Question number three. On this day in 1970, what famous crew took off from Cape Canaveral? Steven. Uh, the Apollo. Apollo what? 12. Incorrect. Alden. 13. <laughs> we just were talking about it. Who brought that? Nick brought that up? <laughs> you are so literally funny. one number off. Steven, Steven, I'm cheering for you tonight, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting after it, man. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. On this day in 1945, the Soviet Union signs friendship treaty, signs a friendship treaty with partisan leader Tito of what country? Steven. France. No. Zach. Spain. No. Alden. Italy. No. Here's the hint. The country no longer exists. Alden. Czechoslovakia? No. Steven. Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is correct. <laughs> Bravo. They made us Steven. the little Yugo car, and then they decided to not be a country anymore. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they gave us the Yugo, and then they split. Like, My work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Question it's number like five. The European Pinto. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> on, on this day in 2004... Who won their first major at the Masters? Steven. Tiger Woods. No. Zach. It's the only golfer I know. Um, <laughs> Arnold Palmer. <laughs> Incorrect. Arnold. He was so old at that point. Incorrect. Alden. I don't know. Jack Nichols. No, the, the golfer is Jack Nicholas, is who you're thinking of. <laughs> Nicholas. That's what is that not what I said? <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Whatever. Yeah. Jack Nicholson, whatever. <laughs> Steven. Um, Jordan Michael Spieth. Watson is incorrect. What'd you say? Jordan Spieth. Incorrect. He was later, and I don't think it was his first major. Is that the... I think I know that guy, actually. Zach, you got you got an answer? No? Oh. Anybody? Anybody? I'm pretty sure Zane plays golf, though, so he would have schooled us already. Brooks Kepka. No, I don't even know who that is. Alden. Jackie Chan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Grumpy said it right after you. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Steven. Hideki Matsuyama. All right. Incorrect. Here's the hint. The closest guess we've gotten is Alden's Jack Nicholas. Except how is that a hint? Because you didn't Nick say Jack Nicholas. Alden. Jack Nicholas. What? No. Steven. John Daly. No. What? All I'm so confused. It's because you said the wrong word. You have y'all have ten seconds. It's I thought it was Jack Nichols or Nicholas or something. That that's the name of a golfer, but you also confused it with the name of another golfer who is the correct answer. What? Oh, something Nichols, Mr. Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> I'm officially saying Mr. Nichols. <laughs> Five, four. Three, two, one. Phil, Phil Mickelson. Mickelson. Oh. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Mickelson. Ah, oh, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like a racist name towards Irish people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> Audience gets it. She got it before uh, before I put it up there. All right. Good. Give it to her. I didn't know. On this day in 1803, French foreign minister... Talleyrand makes what offer to the United States? The French Taliban? <laughs> Zach. 
Um, to help us in war. Incorrect. Steven, were you next? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. halfway. It was, it, was, it was Steven. It was Steven. Uh, I was going to say a, a, a truce of some sort. No. Alden. Louisiana Purchase? Louisiana Aha. Purchase. Ah. Correct. Sixth grade history coming back. <laughs> 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 all right question number seven on this day 1961 what legendary folk singer plays his first major gig in new york at gertie's folk city zach bob dylan bob dylan mm, is nice correct. he's zach, considered folk he, what, what would you consider yeah. him i don't know 60s rock i don't know he or, what he's like the one of the purest folk singers ever made Really? Tom Denver? I guess yeah. I don't either know Bob Dylan <laughs> that well or folk at all. I don't know. You don't know one of those two things, I guess. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot yeah. I don't know, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. On this day in 1988, which actress slash singer won an Oscar for her role in Moonstruck? Alden. Cher. Cher is correct. Nice. Bravo. When you said actress slash singer, I was like, it's one of like three people. I'm just going to go for it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I If I had just said actress, no one would have gotten it. Mm -mm. I guarantee you. I agree. Because um, who's seen Moonstruck? I didn't even know Cher was an actress. I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> who's seen Moonstruck? Um, Grumpy has said Justin Bieber for every freaking question. So <laughs> that was pretty know. funny, though. Yeah. Uh, Diddy has oh, in the chat. Oh, he won as an yeah. embryo. <laughs> All right. Question number nine. On this day in 1945, the U.S. Army liberates which concentration camp near Weimar, Germany? Steven. Dachau. No. Zach. Auschwitz. No. Alden. That was what I was going to say. <laughs> the striped pajamas camp. You guys are just Jew haters, man. That is not Hating fair. on the Jews. You don't. If you don't know Jewish history to a T, then you we even love Hamas. the Jews. <laughs> No one? I no don't one? know the names of camps. Bueller. I, I said the, the two camps Bueller. I know of. Is, is yeah. it like Birkenwald or something like that? Or... I'm giving it to you. Buchenwald. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. That's pretty close. Yeah. That's that was pretty dang close. All right. Question number 10. <laughs> Grumpy says Camp Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not Camp Bieber. <laughs> On this day in 1815, Mount Tambora erupted, killing 10,000 people. In what country is it located? You can give Stephen. Hang on. Indonesia. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> I you was were the Indonesia say, expert. I was you sure say, you could give me the current country or the country that it was in at the time. Oh, okay. And, uh, currently, it's Indonesia. Yeah. How do you pronounce Sumbawa? Sumbawa. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I didn't even know that. Wow, Stephen, bring in the heat. That's All really right. Nice. Every question was answered, y'all. Every question was answered. Um, Stephen has four. Alden has three. Audience has two. Zach has one. It is anybody's game. Round number two. Elite emperors. I'm not going to do well on this. Question: No one's going to do well on this. I don't care about it. <laughs> Only no mediocre emperors. <laughs> Unless it's the emperor's new groove, I'm not going to do well. <laughs> Question number one: Who was the first Roman emperor? Alden. Augustus. <laughs> You're correct. All right. <laughs> I <laughs> thought I was going to do poorly, but all yeah. Right, well, that's one. the that's by far the easiest one of this <laughs> this whole category. Which Chinese emperor was credited with the building of the Great Wall? Alden. Mao. No. <laughs> Stephen. Uh, is, it, is it Ming? No. Oh, I will literally accept any of his three names. Alden. <laughs> Jackie Chan. <laughs> I'm says, sorry. Oh, God. This is... Zach, I'm you sorry, got any guesses? This is so buddy? incorrect, but it's fun. I was gonna make something up, but that'd be racist. So. <laughs> I, Bring it on! Bring it on! I'm trying to get banned from YouTube. So, <laughs> oh my god, no one. Five. Uh, Alden. Confucius. No, Stephen. <laughs> Emperor Chang. <laughs> okay. It was no a good no guess. One, it's no a one's good gonna guess. get this. Here we go. <laughs> Q 
Qin Shi Huang of the, what I said. Uh, the first emperor of China. Yeah. Damn. Mm. Guarantee Zane would have known that one, by the way. Like, <laughs> yeah, he probably would have. He probably would know a bunch of these. All right. Listen to this entire question before putting your hand up. Okay. I will not call on you if you put your hand up before I finish this question. Okay. Which emperor ruled over the largest contiguous empire in history? Alden. Um, oh my God, the um, the Mongolian guy, the uh, Jesus Christ, I not Jesus name, Christ, man. but oh yeah, Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ, technically, yeah. There you right. go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna it. go with uh, human, not not God. Alden, are you gonna um, guess? You have one second. The oh my God. <laughs> Jabba the Hutt. Zach. The Hutt. Yeah, Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Zach, go. Genghis Khan. Genghis That's what I was fine. Dude, I had such a brain fart for that. My God. <laughs> you did. I can see it in your face, man. You said uh, the Mongols, and you were correct in that regard, but I need a I name. legitimately do so poorly with, like, memory recall under pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, that was painful for me. <laughs> I watched your head explode. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Question number four. Who was the longest reigning Japanese emperor in history? Two names. And I can you can answer either one. Steven. Haruhito. Horahito nice. is correct. Nice. Bravo. Wow. I was yeah. gonna say Sony PlayStation. <laughs> that's the only one i know <laughs> so I was gonna go yeah his real name was showa s-h-o-w-a okay well yeah. i'm growa not showa <laughs> <laughs> bravo steven that was the fucking that was the best joke of the night for sure. <laughs> yeah there's there's yeah there's not gonna be a better dad joke than that like that was fantastic all right no yeah Final question of this round. Who was the last emperor of the Aztec Empire? Alden. Genghis Khan. No. Zach. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl. I don't know how to say it. No, that's, it's not that's Quetzalcoatl. Guy, right? Isn't that a that's god? A, that's the yeah. myth guy who came in I just later on. They were named after him. I don't know. It's the only like word I know. He's a serpent myth guy yeah. kind of a guy. Quetzalcoatl. Steven, you got a guess? I mean, did, did they name the city after him, like Michoacan or something like that? No, that's 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 not correct. Um, Grumpy, Grumpy, quit watching Justin Bieber porn, man. It's really on your brain tonight. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I'm trying to think of a hint. The hint is going to be idiotic. OK, this Perfect. hint is going to be stupid um, Good for us. There's a disease you get down there that sounds like this guy's name, Alden. Malaria. No. Emperor <laughs> Malaria. Zach. Emperor Schmovid. <laughs> Steven. Emperor Dengue. <laughs> I can't with this, Alden. Emperor Yellow Fever. <laughs> Y'all are so bad at this. We're, yeah, of course. It's specific to South America. Okay. You only, in, in Central America. Grumpy got the, the name correct. Not oh. the name of the actual emperor, but this is what I was going for. This is what it sounds like. Wait, Montezuma is a disease? Montezuma's Revenge? Yeah, if you drink uh, the water in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was some dude so it getting revenge. Sounds like Montezuma, but it's not. There's it's one letter different. Alden. Pontezuma. <laughs> no. <laughs> Steven, <laughs> Steven, you gotta guess. Um the worst round ever. <laughs> Montezuma. No. I was gonna say that. That's a good one. That's a good name. <laughs> Zach, Zach, one more, buddy. And then I'm going to the next question. This is too fun. Oh. <laughs> Moctezuma. Ah. The second. I was my next one was gonna be Montapuma. 
Grumpy's was Mata Huma. <laughs> 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 oh man oh my god yeah zane would have probably cleaned up here tonight all right round number three uh before <clears> we <throat> do that steve steven has six alden has five Zach i'm pulling for three. steven tonight honestly. audience has two you you can't miss trial you can't say that if you're a contestant oh no I'll, miss I'll, trial I'm no gonna try, but... this game's over <laughs> we're scrapping the whole night all right <laughs> what's that movie about the the with Cusack and the jury thing. Um, that's a good movie, right? I think we watched that in college together. Yeah, I think we did. All yeah, Angry Men. No, it's no, it's, that's a great movie too. The though. title, right? Better off dead. Runaway jury. No, Runaway jury. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> great movie. I yeah. love. I John John Cusack's underrated. I mean, he's a weirdo and he's got horrible politics, but he's a great actor. <laughs> I we need to be separate about like because like Tom Cruise makes good movies, but he's a fucking weirdo as well. You know what I mean? Like I will watch. But the thing with him is he doesn't get involved in politics. So I'm happy with that. Like he doesn't doesn't try to promote certain candidates. He just shuts up and goes about his business. He did. He flipped out on the whole covid scene, though. Well, yeah, but he had a whole thing with that. But yeah, he did. He did. All right. Round number three are these goofy little dumb looking creatures. That from looks like planet. something from like uh like a uh what's the George Lucas and the the goblin movie or, or the or labyrinth? Something. It looks like something from the labyrinth. Yeah, it does. Well that's a marmoset. So question number one. <laughs> what are the two primary regions where marmosets are found? Alden. By region, do you mean like continent? Like, how do I define a region? I, I'll give you all the continent. Okay, Africa and South America. What I was—I just said I was going to give you the continent. Oh, there's I thought only, you, there's okay, only one continent. Okay, well, what's the continent? South America. Okay, well then, region, region, not what country. Ty- ty- type of climate, like region. Oh, like jungle. <laughs> What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. What you want? <laughs> the fucking Amazon specifically? Okay, well, you, you got one of them. Yeah, you okay. have Amazon's a jungle. Amazon rainforest is one of them. Okay. What's, what's the second, Alden? The Bolivian rainforest. No. Uh, I think it was Zach next. <laughs> well, I was just going to say tropical, but that doesn't sound like it's on the right track. Earth. They're on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> They're all I, I, I think moon. I got to give it to you. It's Amazon rainforest and tropical. Oh, I was going to say the coastline. Well, so who, I'm, I'm going to give y'all each that? a point. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to give y'all each a point because that was useless. <laughs> Thank you. That was useless. Okay. Question number two What is a group of marmosets called? Alden. Monkey business. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen. A pack. No. Zach. A barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Alden. A swingers. Oh my gosh. No. Hannah is incorrect. It's not what a What did flock. she say? A flock? <laughs> They're in the canopy, man. I don't know. Steven. A stable. No. Zach. A congress. No. I like that guess though. Alden. A concubine. No, no. <laughs> as soon as Steven and Zach answer one more time, I'm going to give a hint. Steven. A herd. No. That Zach. would be I'm frustrating if I lost a herd again. But... <laughs> a choir. <laughs> Han- Hannah gets it. <laughs> it's a, a troop. troop. It's oh, a troop. Oh, I've heard that with like baboons or something. So I should have heard a that troop. with Boy Scouts. Yep, uh, my my hint was going to be boy, just Boy Scouts. <laughs> That's literally what my hint was going to be. I wish All they right. were called a group of those. I wish they were called Boy Scouts. A Boy Scout of that would be great of these marmosets. Yeah. All right, final question of the game. Literally, well, Zach can tie for first. Alden can get first, and the audience can get first. So here we go. Marmosets share a mating characteristic with penguins. What is this characteristic, Stephen? Uh, I, I was going to say that um, 
the mates are picked by who de delivers the flattest rock to the female, and they're monogamous. Well, that's a lot of answers. But monogamous yeah, got is <laughs> freaking correct. Nice. Bravo, Steven. Good, Good job, job dude. You got your yeah. first victory. Let's, uh, let's and I didn't your, even have to throw it. Let's get your graphic up there. All right, everybody. Thank y'all for playing Libations Trivia. That was awesome. I mean, there were some questions in there that uh, were terrible and embarrassing for everybody involved, including they me. were entertaining for all involved. <laughs> yeah, they were definitely entertaining. Um, Thank you. And we time. learned the first emperor of China was Jackie Chan. We did. We did. That was something that no one knew, including the first emperor of China. <laughs> um, <laughs> Unbeknownst to the first emperor of China. We also knew that I cannot remember Genghis Khan's name for shit. <laughs> Hannah, <laughs> Hannah says, love that you said in common with penguins and not humans. <laughs> yeah, only oh, yeah. sandhill grains and penguins. People, we know people aren't monogamous. Yeah, we just pretend. I was say, statistically, we're not monogamous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, for those for those tuning in for their first time tonight, uh, we do trivia every week. Um, they're every now and then. Once in a blue moon, I, I don't a get winner a other time. than Zane. Um, and a winner other than Zane happens. So if you like trivia, tune in because we do that every week. At some point, I'm going to upgrade it to be a little better, a little more interactive, a little easier for the audience to, to chime in. Trivia um, charades? Tri <laughs> that sounds terrible. Interactive trivia? If we ever get... Great for the podcast listeners. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that would be, that'd be great. Idea. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What's our next topic? I don't even remember. Um, Gas moons. Is, it, is it the geoengineering? It's the geoengineering. Oh, yes. All right. So let me, I got to pull this up on mine. So geoengineering test quietly. Wait, no. Geoengineering <laughs> test. Gosh. Geoengineering <laughs> test quietly launches salt crystals into atmosphere. A solar geoengineering experiment in San Francisco could lead to brighter clouds that reflect sunlight. The risks are numerous. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the article immediately says the risks are. This is dangerous. Thing. Yeah, do not try at home. Yeah, let's uh, let's get the some reflective quality of the surface of the Earth is called albedo. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah. That roar is not coming from a snow machine. Instead, the plume you see are tiny aerosol particles. It's the first technology in the country to test ways to brighten clouds in an effort to cool the glow. This system is composed of three main components. In these tanks, Jessica Madrado and a group of scientists Not from even the University American. of Washington's Marine Cloud Brightening Program are mixing salt and water and using a compression system to test if this machine can distribute the right size particles. They say Alameda provides the perfect cloud conditions over the bay. If you make the particles that are too small, uh, they are not going to uh, create the effect that you want in, in this marine cloud. If you make them too big, they will actually create or induce uh, rainy clouds. The goal? To mm -hmm. mimic the effects of pollution in a cleaner way, using salt Controlling water the to in clouds, which they hope will then reflect more sunlight back into space to help cool the Earth. All right, Still in the early shut phases, this crap off. I can't. <laughs> this is so. This is so stupid. So this is so stupid, everybody. Okay. Salt rain. <clears throat> first of all, first of all, the fact that people are funding and spending money to combat a changing climate that has been changing since the day the Earth was created is idiotic and a complete waste of resources. We Second, should be burrowing underground. We should be definitely be burrowing underground. Second, don't mess with nature because nature will bite you in the ass. I mean, th somebody in this article says, history has shown us that when we insert ourselves into modifications of nature, there are always very serious unintended consequences. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore it would be prudent to listen to what history has shown and look for consequences. Dude, I, I mean, I can think of like 10 off the top of my head that would make this a horrible idea to shoot salt crystals into clouds and make salty clouds. Yeah, what are, tears. What are we Sad. doing? At some point, and like, 
I love that they said in San Francisco and they didn't like, like it can't just spread everywhere. Like clouds <laughs> just don't go other places. <laughs> no, we only do these clouds here. We also stop the wind while we do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The earth no longer rotates either. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's none of the. And, and I love how they're calling the this the first. Effect or whatever. They're calling this the first. So we got, uh, what was his name? Ben Livingston. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Is this, this guy the was gold like. gold dust guy or uh i may i may be having the name wrong but uh, you know we had <laughs> there was a pilot that did several 60 minutes interviews before he kicked the bucket and he was around you know in the mid to late 40s and that's what they would do is they would fly off the east coast and they could spray um uh what was it like silver iodide that silver thing. okay yeah. yeah silver iodide which is still considered a salt by definition so we're not talking sodium chloride we're not talking table salt okay right but uh, you know, salt metals like uh, yeah. salt is an entire column on the periodic table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but they could like potassium. Hurricanes, hurricanes were forming. They could identify that. They could send a squad of planes up in there to spray the silver iodide, and it dissipates. And I mean, we did that in the forties, so that's when yeah. the weather modification programs began. Uh, we also know that we were doing cloud seeding. Uh, at, at, during Vietnam, you know, we flooded the Ho Chi Minh Trail. We extended the monsoon season like three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it was a Chiang Kai Chek. You know, he, he we disrupted his supply lines. Uh, yeah, we, we extended the monsoon. Um, I've heard of that too. Actually, I didn't know who was involved with that, but yeah. Uh, and, and then, you know, in the '90s, you know, that's when we when we built that that array of radio antennas up in Gakona, Alaska. Uh, the HAARP, the High Frequency yeah. Active Auroral Research Program. Yeah. Uh, the, the original purpose of the program was so they could, they could bounce strong radio signals off of the ionosphere and penetrate deep water for um, submariner communications mm -hmm. across the globe. But they found it has a bunch of other effects when they heat the ionosphere or whatever. Yeah, that's what they found out was that they, they could build uh, like mirrors up in the ionosphere uh, that they could bounce signals in different directions uh, that could magnify signals. And then they knew that if there was a storm already forming and if they focused their, their power beam, you know, in that area, that it made the storm it. a whole lot bigger and they yeah. could steer it. Yeah. And then, you know, as things got more powerful over the years, they also found that they could push the jet stream now temporarily, uh, but they could push the jet stream. Uh, so again, you know, all these climate change folks, uh, we cannot address anthropogenic climate change unless we're going to have a discussion on military grade weather modification. Yep. I don't think anybody should be discussing climate change ever. Just shut your mouths about the whole daggum thing. Well, I don't want the government screwing with my weather. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. I just think everybody should just enjoy the climate and move on. Uh, uh, I, it just it's it's crazy to me that we're launching things into clouds to modify clouds so that more of the sun bounces away from the earth the sun which keeps us alive and keeps every living thing on earth alive let's 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 reject so it's, and it's global warming, warming again it's global warming <laughs> like i thought yeah, we'd been global yeah. warming in the late 90s Dude, that was that was going to be my next thing yeah. i've i haven't heard a lefty say global warming in like 10 years. Uh, yeah. The, I've been that. hearing for the last 15 years, we're overdue for an ice age. <laughs> My so favorite part we, of all of it. Why are we deliberately is that, cooling the planet when we're overdue for an ice age? <laughs> you know? I like that. They calling it a test, but their test is, oh, we're just doing it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A test. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to test shooting myself in the head and just see. It's what just happens? A it's just yeah. a test, though. You'll you'll take the results, you'll gather the data, yeah. and you'll make conclusions and adjust your experiment to. next time. Yeah, test the effects of suicide on my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll report back my findings. And no. now that I've made that joke, I'm officially on record as being suicidal, and I won't be able to own a gun. Oh, and, and do I need to associate with yours? QAnon? I can come get yours whenever you whenever you need me to, Alden. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I know you're fond of that one. Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, you know, you can't fly a helicopter either or a plane. You yeah. know, see, Just went out the window. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like this, this stuff pisses me off. Like there. So, what's the libertarian argument? What's the like anarchist argument for people 
in favor screwing, of screwing with the weather. No, no. Like uh, my, I guess my question is like, is this a, a lot of people would say this could be an argument against libertarianism and against anarchism because there people have the ability to completely screw with things that will not just affect them mm -hmm. and will affect possibly the entire globe, but definitely people within their immediate region. Um, so like, are these people technically speaking violating the non-aggression principle in some way, shape or form, or of has course. have the potential to, well, of course. yeah, but so are everyone that is putting MRNA vaccines into livestock and food and other. Oh, yeah, no, I would things. agree with that for sure. Yeah. yeah, like growing HIV and corn in open air fields, like <laughs> yeah, it's a little destructive. Yeah, even just well, think... the modifying of crops in general, and then do you know the whole thing with like so like Monsanto like sues these small farms because yeah. like they'll be next to them. And the wind totally will carry the yeah, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys know. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, no. Well, let, let's explain it for the for the audience. So basically, what mm -hmm. happens is these farmers will. Be, have their farm next to a big Monsanto uh, GMO farm, farm of like some GMO kind. farm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the Monsanto seeds will be carried over into the small farmers. Land. Just, just the, the pollen. pollen, just the just pollen. The pollen. Yeah. yeah just the pollen, just the seeds, whatever, but it'll just be accidentally carried over and then it will get into their crop. And then if Monsanto or uh, DNA uh, tests, like yes. genetic tests, DNA the, tests the neighboring crop. field. And if it shows up, which it will, of course, which it then will. It's, yeah, then, then it's they then they their, own their then they own they're in violation of copyright because they own the strain of the GMO yeah. because they, quote unquote, developed it. And it's like, you know, intellectual property. Yeah. But then it naturally spreads to the the neighboring crop. And so then they own the other crop. Or yeah, this, this is why libertarians don't believe in intellectual property like that. Right. That right. is a the perfect example of it. Because I mean, the, the average American, if you do a DNA analysis, we're two percent corn. So if it's all <laughs> GMO corn, does Monsanto own us? That's actually Very Monsanto is trying That's to take over the world with slaves. We're all going <laughs> to yeah. be slaves to Monsanto. I think we already are. Actually, we are. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. it's, it's well, a good I think thing in a libertarian not, world so. too. Well, it's like, bare now. Bare hang Monsanto. on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let Zach, let Zach talk. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to fill in for uh, uh, Zane this time and give the libertarian autistic answer of how it <laughs> would be in, in Kapistan. So, yeah, I think in a perfect, you know, anarchist libertarian world, everybody would be responsible for their actions. There's no mm -hmm. like, oops, I screwed up. The government's going to bail us out. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, like when BP did the oil spill and it spilled yeah. all over, you know, Louisiana and texas and whatever else it's the government cleaned it up the government paid for it and i'm sure you know bp suffered somewhat but not they're still around like, they probably would not exist anymore yeah. if they actually had to pay all the damages yes. they were so fine like two be, weeks operating expenses yes. yeah, yeah yeah so i think people would be less likely to try to screw with the earth and mm. every, you know the weather and things like that if they were good responsible point. for anything that could go wrong that's a good, that's a really good point. I like that. You're, you're hundred percent correct. The government just comes in and fixes all these things. I mean, the government fixed the Baltimore bridge. Like we're paying for that, that dumb bridge. Yeah. To be fixed. Why wasn't it the shipping company that ran into it? There you go. <laughs> that's, exactly. that's a fair point. Yeah. Yep. It's wild, man. Like uh, people messing with the climate is insane. It's like, a bad idea. It's, it's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. And the testing for this, uh, should be i don't know how but done not in a city <laughs> yes not in one of the most populated yeah. cities in the united states <laughs> not just along the i don't know western seaboard like, that's that's our experience clouds other places yeah, yeah just go do it in antarctica like go do it somewhere I'm, where no one is china has been doing this for a long time like they're not even hiding it mm -hmm. like there's websites you can go to and apply for permits for them to create rain clouds over your crops yeah, yeah. they've been not That's hiding it for a long time too like when was the beijing olympics like yeah, forever yeah, yeah. ago at this point yeah it was like and they were saying they were saying like we are shooting crap into the sky to make it rain the weeks before the olympics so that it won't rain during the olympics and to yeah. like clean to wash everything to clean up the streets or whatever too and like they were doing crazy stuff. They were trying to like, they, do you see how much seaweed they were taking out and everything and like just wild stuff to, to augment the, 
the area there. Mm. Guys, like what Atlanta did in '96, or maybe not seaweed. What the hell was it? I don't even remember. They were doing. They were spending buttloads of money to to make it like look pretty because it was going to be like on the world stage or whatever. But mm. I don't remember any of it. I, I don't care about the Olympics. So. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't care less. Um, all right, let's go to our next topic, which is um, sound investigations. I believe got this from. Didn't they get this from uh, what's O'Keefe's old James old O'Keefe, group? O'Keefe Media Group, <clears throat> Project or, Veritas? Pro, didn't they get it from Project Veritas? I'm not sure, but anyway, let's uh, let's unmute it and play this play this bit. We call it a nudge. A nudge. A nudge. A nudge. Mm. Sometimes you just gotta get a quick look just to see what happens. Sometimes you like the views and just wait for it to follow. Nothing like putting on a fake social media thing to like really get people mad. Alex Jones. Yeah, so we were after him. You are? We did what we wanted. Which would what? He took his money away. Gavin Oblenis is a contracting officer at the CIA. Oblenis worked for the FBI in 2021 and 2022 in the San. All right. So mm. this guy, if you go watch the full, you can go watch the full video. It's good. It's, it's an interesting one. Um, basically he just confirms a whole lot of things that they're not supposed to be saying. So one that Alex Jones was 100% targeted and they mm -hmm. were only trying to take his money away so that he couldn't do what he needs to be done and stigmatize him Two and make an example confirmed that more than 20 FBI agents were in the crowd during January 6th. He said that. I mean, and we all knew and he knows them. He knows some of them personally. Yeah. Um, this is what I've been trying to tell my dad for months. Yes. And well, I stopped trying. It's just, it's just, there's another, there's another, there's so many crazy hidden camera videos now. Like there's yeah. another one that came out today about something else. Today? I what it was. Yeah. That came out today. I forget what it was about, but it's wild what people will say when they think that they're like in confidence with somebody mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Um, and just the admission. And it's like these things that people keep to themselves and that these secrets that people keep and the thing, the terrible things that people do, like they, I don't, it seems like they have this innate desire to be shot by the CIA. Oh, right. <laughs> that, that too. Yeah. But to tell people like they have to let it out somehow. Yeah. And yeah, so I, like most crimes get, you know, yeah. most criminals get busted just because they tell somebody. They tell someone. Yeah. 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 It's a weird thing, but it's yeah. But yeah, like obviously this could just be some crazy person in the CIA who just says weird crap on dates. Like I, I, it's not 100% confirmed, I guess, but this guy's testimony or this guy's saying it says that FBI agents were in the crowd and he's, he said, that they couldn't control the situation. Um, yeah, well, the whole point is they instigate it to a point where there's yeah. then an organic sort of response yeah. or whatever. Well, but and, they know, you know he, he could be just flexing to get in that dude's pants. Uh, yeah. But yeah, real thing too. At the same time, his, his rank says that he, he should carry himself in public <clears throat> a whole different level. They yeah. should. So at the very least, his job is in jeopardy. His security clearance is, is in jeopardy. Yeah. Um, you know, if he's just making this stuff up, uh, at the very least, he's unreliable to the CIA from here on. Yeah. Unless this was his job. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's interesting. The plot thickens. Yeah, leak mm. actual information, but do it in such an uncredible way mm. that it makes it unable to ever go to trial. Right, mm. yeah. Still the CIA because you know, yeah. he's confirming what we already knew. Right. Well, yeah. Alex Jones is already talking about this stuff. It was on his yeah. he was talking about it yesterday on his show. Because he's I mean, he's already talking to his attorneys because he's, yeah. he's 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 mounting oh, he's a already, lawsuit. Yeah, he's already mounting a lawsuit. Yeah. 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 He went he went off. Because you got I mean, you got the Sandy Hook parents that you know they got a judgment for a billion dollars. Was it really a billion? A billion yes. dollars. Well, it's a, it's the, a the billion original, dollar defamation lawsuit. The original was the GDP of France. Yeah. What? Yes. The original was the GDP 
of France, and then they dropped it down to a mere billion, just one billion dollars. Right. Does he have a billion dollars? No, no. I didn't think so. No, no. He spends most of his money on his daggum show. Right. And his watches. And his yeah, his watches. <laughs> he's got maybe a hundred million. You know, like that's really what they were hoping for because he's like, you know, we could we could average that out over like twenty years and make it. Why? Work. Why does he owe them any money? He he doesn't. He I mean he shouldn't. I I agree. Did he shoot someone? I don't even understand what the whole. I'm not like his biggest fan or anything, but like I don't understand what this, what the grounds are for this case, even. Uh, emotional damage. That's literally it. It's just emotional heart, like grievance, and um, it's just to get him. I mean, they were yeah. taking, talking about taking his cat and auctioning it off. What? What yeah. kind of emotional damage is that going to do to him? Is this some fucking eye for an eye bullshit? What the fuck are we doing? Well, they've been reading too much of the Old Testament, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, I He's just... going to turn into a, a... Instead of a pillar of salt nowadays, it'll be a cloud of salt. Like... I love this uh, Stephen Frozen pose right now. This is freaking great. Um, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even <laughs> notice that. <laughs> <any at all. laughs> the tongue. I was like... Why hasn't Steven <gasps> climbed back in yet? And that was why. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's that's something to keep an eye on now. Um, now that that's come out, we'll see. We'll see what the FBI's response is, what the CIA has to say about it. But uh, that came out like a day or so ago. I'm sure um, it'll be truthful, no matter what they say. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. We'll get the I'm full we, story. We trust the CIA. I'm just interested yeah. in what the response is. That way, I can um, analyze their response as well. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to the next one. I love to analyze the CIA. China USA proxy war through Ukraine Russia. Um, world news from real news, no bullshit. The United States has warned Western allies that China has stepped up its military support for Russia, including by providing geospatial intelligence to help in its war against Ukraine. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically, China is helping Russia. We're helping Ukraine. My question is: Is this a is this just turning into a USA war versus China like, proxy war? Like, yeah. are we just using two other countries to not actually go to war with each other? Um, Sounds like it. That, uh, uh, yeah. And Yee ye Spicy Boy <laughs> says, <laughs> says, oh no, someone's doing the same thing we're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Dude. Okay. Ye. I remember. So, Parks and Rec, I, I don't know if you remember this, Alden, but back in the Probably. day, Parks and Rec was around um, prior to social media. Okay, so social media wasn't a thing. And during one of the debates on that show, they re start reading off tweets. And, and the host of the debate, the moderator, is like, so we're, we're going to get tweets from online because apparently that's a thing that's a now. That's a thing now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that having to read off usernames like yee yee spicy boy yeah is probably the best thing that's happened to television and have you years. seen the ones <laughs> where people make fake accounts that are like the mike hunt type names or whatever for like the weather uh -huh. where they read off some stupid thing about yeah yeah so good they're they open themselves yeah. up to that why would they do that i don't know but. Yeah, they really do. I really like it when they embed a tweet on a website like cnn embeds a tweet into a story and then somebody right. will change their username to like cnn is fake news <laughs> yeah <laughs> be on the site. that's yeah. great once it's um, already embedded and then do it I'm noticing when you get close to me, I'm like, wow, I got some serious crap. I only like an hour ago just unpacked my razor. So gotcha, gotcha. No worries. <laughs> I have I have some scruff too. So I'm right there with you. The biblical kind, yeah. Um, I, I do find it hilarious that like the USA is warning people that China is doing exactly what we're already yeah, doing. Yeah, we like we would know what yes, like what what's the complaint here that like what uh, I don't get it. I, I I don't get why. Well, I mean, I kind of get. Watch it. out! China's funding somebody Proxy else war. in a war. Like, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Like, it makes sense, especially like tensions have been mounting with us in China for a very long time. Um, yeah. Trump repeatedly said we're going to make China pay for China. this. We're going to tax them out the wazoo. All that. Kind he of said thing. a he said a lot of things. Though. Put tariffs on them. All that crap. And yeah, which by the way, they won't suffer from. We will. Right. Yeah, no, I know, but he doesn't. The case with he doesn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't know but, that. He's he's not that. 
into economics. Um, but it's just, I don't know. Do you, morally it's horrendous, but like politically and maybe um, casualty wise, if this is an actual proxy war between the U S and China, it's actually in the grand scheme of things, a better idea than a full scale war between China and the U S if by what better you mean like less fewer casualties, lives lost, yeah, yeah. yeah, than I would think. Less global destruction, so, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just an interesting, interesting thought. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't look too much into this. Just because I just wanted to know what y'all's thoughts were on the idea of a proxy war. Yeah, so, yeah. Zach, you so, got anything? Seems like a bad idea on both sides, but we like it seem it, like but. a bad idea. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not liking it, but fair here enough. We are. Yeah, fair enough. All right. I just can't go. stop thinking of Red Dawn. Dude, I think about that movie all the time. <laughs> it's just it's just the best movie. Yeah. Um, the original, not the remake. Of course. I don't ever watch the remake. Ever. You should. Um, There's very few remakes you should watch. All right. Let's go talk about the economy. Let's hear what Janet Yellen the economy has to say. continues to hold up no matter what happens on the oh, Fed. This lady. I think we've got a good, strong economy. We've got very strong domestic demand. Um, consumers are holding up some low income consumers um, or perhaps exhausting their buffers of saving that they built up during the pandemic. We're seeing a little bit more distress at the household level there, but generally, Households are in very good financial sh shape. <laughs> okay, okay. First off, tell me who was able to save money during lockdowns where you couldn't go to work. Tell, tell, tell me who saved up tons and tons of money for the situation we're currently in so that oh, uh, Jeff Bezos. Have savings. <laughs> exactly. Like, the, it's, idi it's idiotic to think that anyone was able to... The, the, the checks they sent out to people were spent within two seconds. It was 1200 bucks, like three right. times they sent to people. Right. It was like weird numbers. It was like 600 but, and then it was like 1200 yeah. who got Who got the mortgage relief just because you could, though? Who? People I mean, with well, houses. All you had to do was say, hey, I have a job. I'm affected by the lockdowns. Yeah. And then your mortgage company is like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you don't have to pay us for six months. Yeah, I mean, I... They were giving out money. I got the PPP stuff. Right. Well, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the money they were giving out. It was like you could pause your mortgage payments for six months. Like, well, I should have done that for sure. Right. Does this like, affect anything in terms of like the interest and principal like ratios on your payment, or does it like hold? No, 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 no interest would accrue during that period. No payments. That totally pause it. The federal government gave them money to cover the difference that to pay them for the interest that you would pay. If you're real sneaky you would make the same payment and then all of that would go to principal and then you would actually take life off of your loan. Yes. Yes. Or, you know, if you're just like, Hey, yeah. I can turn my bills off just by asking for it. Well, I feel yeah. like I really missed an opportunity here, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a house yet at that point. So I didn't. So. It's just, it's, it's wild. She thinks the economy is good. The economy is in no way, shape, or form, good. I, You've lost, I would not call it good. You've lost 24% of, like, if you had had 100 bucks and, like, been able to buy $100 worth of groceries in 2020. Just talking about inflation alone, You would be able to buy $76 worth of yeah. groceries now. Yeah. Um, which is, you, you've lost 24% That's of the value of your dollars. Yeah. And it's not going to get better because the, the, the cost of printing money, the inflation that comes along with that, I said this, as soon as we printed the money, it doesn't just happen the next year. It happens over the next decade or two. So it's five to 20 years of us starting to feel the impacts of printing 40% of all the dollars ever printed in 2020. Like it's, it's not going, the dollar's not going to get better. Well, like, inflation's baked in, you know, we, and we talked about this like seven weeks ago, yeah. you know, when we were talking about, you know, the CPI and how that's a flawed number. Uh, yeah. Because they'll do the they'll do the substitution method. They do the um, what yeah, is they it? The, change the, how it's defined. Yeah. Yeah. The, they don't the include housing and energy. Yes, all, all of those things. Um, they don't. No. Yeah. They, they don't. No they don't need energy or housing. Seasonal, oh. 
What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, man. It's so crazy. It's ridiculous. inflation. It's, it's you know, like, like so pure government like, number. It's, yeah. yeah, the numbers that just came out this week what was it? inflation was like three and a half percent, which is just it's just above the threshold where the Fed is not only going to not cut rates in June, yeah. they're going to keep raising them. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> Everyone's holding their breath for the Fed to cut rates in June because they're, they're for what mortgages or. Yes, for, uh, but it's not no, just it's not, mortgages. It's lending money. It's to lend or just money to borrow money, money in money. general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I just bought a house. Rates, rates, it's, you know, it's the overnight rates, like what banks charge other banks to borrow money from each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The borrow rate or whatever. Yeah. So the, everyone's holding their breath for that. You know, you, I, I mean, any okay. kind of financial news, no matter what kind of slant is on it, you hear about this commercial real estate crunch that's happening, you know, because banks are starting to say no to the, the TI loans, the tenant improvement loans. You know, so if you if you own, uh, you know, multifamily developments, you know, condos and apartments mm. and things like that, and you're like, like hey, duplexes, I, haven't, quad places. I haven't upgraded the appliances or the countertops in 15 years. I need a loan for this. Uh -huh. The bank's like, nah, bro. Yeah. We yeah. want you to pay down your principal first. Right. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get an improvement loan for our Airbnb, and it's very difficult. Right. Mm. Right. You know, banks are starting to say no more and more and more and more. Um, and, and I mean, you can have a great kit, awesome credit rating. You can put 20% down and they're still yep. like, nah. I get nervous when banks start saying no, because I feel like banks kind of know the trend of like where we're going. And it's going to be that like, things are going to get hard. And it's going to be hard for people to then make their payments on loans. Like well, if the here's one indicator. Sure. Okay. Because you know, we've been hearing news for 20 years now, uh, ATMs, online payments, electronic transfers. Ask digital this, payment portal app, QuickBooks this, PayPal, all this kind of stuff is doing away for the need for a conventional teller. Um, mm. That's never going to totally go away because there's always going to be some little some little thing that you can't really build into an app. Um, you know, creating new accounts is always going to be easier person to person, things like that. But drive around downtown, any major city, are banks building more locations? It, you know, is this because we have the need for more tellers? You know, just think about it because like McDonald's is a real estate corporation that happens to sell hamburgers. Mm. Right. Okay. Yep. So think about this. There's a commercial real estate crunch, which means if you have cash, you're getting commercial real estate for below market rates right now because your competitor that does not have cash cannot get a loan. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you see banks all of a sudden make these aggressive build outs, they know the storm is coming. Mm. And when the storm comes and we start to bounce back from that, that's when they can liquidate those properties and turn in the revenue. Yeah. That's a good point. Because it's not going to come from you because you don't have any money right now. Uh, you know, I, I just, I was just in a webinar today uh, doing you know economic outlook and forecasting and things like that. And uh, the top 10% of all income earners in the country control two thirds of the wealth. Mm -hmm. The bottom 50% control 2.7%. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's a, somehow even more like it's this, it's the other side of the same coin, but it's a more alarming figure. Yeah. You got to do something about this income inequality, Stephen. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, tax the rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. I mean, that's it's it's easy to to demagogue those numbers to to play in that kind of narrative. Yeah. Uh, that's but that's just I mean, you just look at like who's making money moves and it's the people that have cash or made investments in the last 10 years. Yeah. So BlackRock. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Which BlackRock did just buy like $10 billion worth of apartments in the country. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah you just wild. posted that in there. Yeah, because yeah. they don't need a loan for tenant improvements. No, right? they don't. No, yeah, they don't. They, they don't do, do those anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not interested in that. Well, before we get to the funny stuff, I want to end on this uh, in the regular things on this. Uh, basically, just to remind you what taxation is. So, Zach, pull up this last video and let's watch this. Here we go from fighting a revolution over a 2% tax on a breakfast beverage to what we pay today. And we're taxed on money when we receive it, when we spend it, when we keep it, when we invest it, and even when we die with it. It gets worse. We commute to work to make that money in a car that is taxed again to register on roads we're already taxed to build, fueled yeah. by gas that is taxed even further, and many times through tolls that tax you again. 
And to, that's to maintain bridges and highways and tunnels that already have billions of dollars, taxpayer dollars tax, allocated yeah. to them, and they're still falling apart. And then when you get to your office that is taxed to exist in a corporation that is also taxed to do business, that almost certainly requires permits and other things, which are another tax, you are paid a paycheck that the corporation must match another payroll tax on top of what they have to pay you. 7%. Then you go to a home of which you are taxed to own every single year that we bought with money that the government already taxed us on. Oh, by the way, the more money you make and the more you pay in taxes warrants the government taking more and even higher percentages of your money. Now, if you're angry, hold that thought. Our federal tax code is 2,600 pages, 400 pages longer than the unabridged version of the Webster Dictionary. But if you read that tax law cover to cover and you did your taxes solely based on that, you'd probably go to jail. Why? Because that does not include the over 9,000 pages of additional IRS regulations that were never passed into law, but rather written by some bureaucrat sitting in his office that we still have to abide by. Congress never passed that. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I like how George Carlin said it too. You know, we wake up in the morning and go to work in a car that we wouldn't need if we didn't have the job to pay for the house that we wouldn't really want if we didn't have that job. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And I, yeah, I just wanted, I think it's a good reminder and that was a fantastic way to, he, he put that. Is, There's even more points of taxation that he didn't even cover. It's true. It's insane like, how many like points a, there are. That was a good like. Oh, I agree, what though, People I agree. do daily. Yeah, you know? I like, agree. Everybody comes in contact with basically everything that he said, and I. He like, didn't I, even mention uh, sales tax. I don't think did he mention that, which is uh, a whole other thing. I think he so. You're taxed. Taxed. He said we're taxed when we spend it. Oh, he did. Okay, okay. Because yeah. because yeah. you're taxed on the money that you earn, and then a lot of the times you're taxed on the money that you spend. Yes. It's ridiculous. Y'all, go get Bitcoin. Go <laughs> right, yeah. get Bitcoin, people. Like, I know that it seems scary at times. I cannot tell you how beneficial it will be for you to own Bitcoin into the future. Um, we're doing a year-long series on this over at the Free Georgia podcast. Um, basically once a month talking about different aspects of Bitcoin. We teach you how to get a wallet. We teach you what the basics are. We're going to teach you all sorts of things. Um, Bitcoin, the, the, everything we've talked about, the U S dollar is inflated, basically going to be inflated into oblivion. Yeah. Um, and at some point it's going to be so utterly worthless that, America will you, that we will have to switch to a different currency. Oh, that, and then they're gonna then they're gonna be like, "Hey, we have this handy new digital there currency." There you yeah, go. Exactly. That's it's exactly in, what they're. It's gonna in do. fuck intentional. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's they're, part they're of the plan. going to switch us over to a some type of either global digital currency or um, U.S. digital currency. At which point, you will no longer have any control over your money. And, no. and how UPS you UPS has already been for like 25 years at least converting native currencies into SDRs for international shipping. Uh, What's strategic SDR? drawing rights, which is oh. issued by the IMF. Oh my god. I don't know anything about that. Freaking IMF. Whenever they do try to roll it out too, they're gonna basically bribe people. Yep. They're gonna be like, there is an account out there, it has a thousand dollars in it, and if you claim it then you have that thousand dollars, but now you're on the digital dollar. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh well, yeah. Italy yeah. is already doing that. Um, they're hey, sign up for this app. Show us that you recycle. Show us you use less power. Show us that you. Know, I thought you were going to say condoms. You wear clothes until they're falling apart. That you use public transit. All this kind of stuff. You and, read darn. You know, your we own give you socks. exclusive discounts to local concerts. We give you discounted bus tickets, and we even give you our own native cryptocurrency. Um, it's just, Bologna, Italy rolled that out last summer. It's just unbelievable, man. The infrastructure that government can create using the money that they steal from us is yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's cra and it sucks. <laughs> the only good parts that they create the are stuff that benefits, benefits them and not us. That's, that's the, yeah. just so crazy. That's the infrastructure you know about. Because yeah. how, how many people could we actually help if we kept our whole paycheck? Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Like that homeless guy down the road, like, you know, instead of me buying him a burger, I'm buying him a hotel room for the night. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm like, employing him. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, like the, the, what is it? The wheat flour massacre. Like that ain't going to happen, you know, yeah. because, because, you know, if I'm keeping my whole paycheck, I'm carrying my rifle to go hand out food. There we go. Plus war is expensive. If they don't yep. have the fed to fund it for them and tax money stolen to, they're not going to fight as many wars. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's why Ukraine is buying Chinese drones now. Yeah. You know, they're abandoning our drones because they're expensive and flawed. I got news for them. <laughs> their drones suck too. I use those but they're the Chinese drones and they're terrible yeah. a lot of the time. Good night, Grumpy. Good night, night Grumpy. Good night, man. But uh, yeah, of course, though, because like, so the, it's really weird for China to be double dipping like that, though. Yeah. Because they're, they're in bricks. And well, so also, is Russia. It, but it might not be a Chinese, like, it might not be a Chinese sale. It could be some other third party that's selling these things. No. I'm just, I'm, there, there is no good. I don't private, buy them from China. There is no private third party. Well, the Chinese China. are selling us drones. Sure. But they're also, you know, not openly trying to get our help subverting another currency. Maybe they are. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe they are. Yeah. I mean, well, they, they've also said that, you know, once they hang the last capitalist, they'll use the rope that we sold to them. Oh, per perfect. Can I, yeah. can I give them the rope? Um, wasn't it <laughs> weren't we talking about this when, when we were covering the uh the like migration through like central america whatever wasn't it china that was like funding all the like different hostels yeah. and things up the way or whatever yeah. like yeah. so there's a lot of the migrants are chinese yeah yeah oh yeah well you know canada you know before they got super lib in the early 80s they had a big thing with that because that their votes were being diluted hmm. very much so, like because the Chinese were going like the concept of the anchor babies. Yeah. You know, like that didn't start here. The, the, the Chinese were going to Canada to have their babies for free because of it, it was offloading the medical debt from the communist system that was collapsing. Mm. And they're like, Hey, Canada's got free healthcare. Go have your baby over there. They do a great job. Jeez. And that's what they were doing. They were catching a one way flight, nine months pregnant, showing up two days later, three days later, having a baby. Mm. That baby's a Canadian citizen. And then 20 years later, that guy's running for parliament when his family has no cultural ties to Canada. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Now yeah. they don't do that because they would risk flying on a Boeing to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. All right, y'all. If you've enjoyed the show, please drop a like on the video. Um, share it with your friends. We do this every week. Uh, we have a blast doing it. Some episodes are better than others. Um, it's always better when uh, Zane's not here to kill everybody at trivia. Um, but it is better when Zane is here. We are to, though, to, yeah. and to push back on our weird conspiracies. Yeah, Zane does help uh, keep us grounded a lot of the times and give uh, intellectual arguments that almost no one else could come up with on the spot. So <laughs> very, um, very like textbook principle oriented. Yes, logic like linear arguments yeah yeah and somehow he does it while still drinking it's it's crazy yeah but um, he's drinking like blueberry wheat beers like yeah that's true <laughs> okay i'm picking on him. um all right well we stream on facebook youtube twitter rumble odyssey and peaceful c network um and we like i said earlier in the show we will have merch coming out very very soon steven froze again steven oh man come back buddy you gotta, you're going to miss the fun, funny stuff. All right. Well, at the end of the show, we always uh, show three or four. Tonight is five <laughs> funny clips. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here's just a clean, clean your palate. Now, let's go back to that wider view. That was way better. How do I get back there? That gummit. <laughs> That's better. Okay. I'm going to zoom in for this so that uh, we can have a better look. There we go. All right. Do you want to go get ice cream? No. Okay. Are you going? No, it's okay. Which ice cream? The chocolate ice cream place? Mm-hmm. Are you going? No, it's okay. I don't. I don't want ice cream anymore. What if I want ice cream now? What would we do? do you you created the option of an ice cream in my head, and now you're saying you don't want ice cream. But you and said you didn't want to go. Going for ice cream and eating ice cream are two very different things. <laughs> Are you going to procure said ice cream? I wanted to go for ice cream with you. No, I want to eat ice cream in this house. Are you going to get ice cream? No, I don't want to go by myself. And if I go to get ice cream, then you want ice cream again all of a sudden? 
No, it's okay. I don't so care. You don't, okay, so if I go eat ice cream, you won't get mad if I don't bring you any. And then bring me some ice cream. So you also <laughs> don't want to go get ice cream. I, you just want to eat ice cream. I wanted to go with you. Okay. I don't want ice cream. So if I go, <laughs> you're not getting any. If I'll you, go eat it myself over if there. You I, go, we'll eat it alone over there. I'll eat it with you at home if you go get it. Those are the options. <laughs> are you going? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll go with you. No, I'm not going with you. I will go with you. Why won't you go I with me? I want to be beside you and the purpose <laughs> of the ice cream happens. Do you want to go get ice cream? <laughs> he sounds fun. Oh, uh, dude, their relationship is so funny. They do so many funny things together. It's great. Um, all right. Next up. Get out of your comfort zone and be more focused. <laughs> That's someone that took too many drops of acid before we <laughs> yeah for sure that's that's definitely been me before though with the acid uh, uh no just with the <laughs> what am i doing here in this place i don't like here. <laughs> oh, all right man. this is a this is a classic if you don't know who sam kennison is go look him up oh i know her. yeah there we go want to stop world hunger stop sending them food yeah. don't send these people another bite folks you want to send them something you want to help send them u-hauls Send them U-Haul, some luggage, we'll send them a guy out there that goes, hey, you know, we've been driving out here every day with your food for like the last, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 years. And we were driving out here a day across the desert, and it occurred to us there wouldn't be world hunger if you people would live where the food is! <laughs> This is sand. Yeah. <laughs> it's sand. You know it's going to be 100 years from now, huh? It's going to be sand. <laughs> you Get your kids, get your shit. We'll make one trip. We'll take you to where the food is. To you want to stop? <laughs> so good. I haven't seen him in a while, man. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. You know, it used to be the Fertile Crescent. And now it's a desert. Yeah. No, it climate used to be super fertile. Yeah, no, it's super climate change. It's it's too bad somebody didn't try to stop climate change back then. You know, it's, it's crazy. I, I bet I bet they could have stopped it from happening. <laughs> and we were even just on world. a tour in like Sedona, and we went down there, and we were like doing the like kind of like the you know the Native American tour, and like doing some different things and seeing you know like ayahuasca, the different. Yeah, we were doing ayahuasca. Yeah, and anyway, someone on the tour asked like, "How did they grow food here?" you know in the desert and like the guy was like well it wasn't like this then you know <laughs> like you know yeah 900 years ago <laughs> like it wasn't <laughs> this barren you know anyway yeah uh, yep people don't understand how climate works all right two more political system so broken <laughs> before we continue if you could please point on the map to where you live uh, that's just a map of the United States. I don't live. Ah, you're close. This is a map of places you could live for me to potentially start giving a shit about your political opinion. And you'll notice <laughs> whatever continent you're from, not on here. California isn't on there either. I am aware. Political. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty great. All right. And the final uh, one for the evening. I don't know if y'all watch Kill Tony. Um, y'all watch mm -mm. this show? Mm -mm. It's a comedy show uh, i think it's mondays uh, is that tucker carlson yeah it's mondays and tucker got got pulled up on stage um at this one he went with rogan and uh yeah it's basically newer comedians doing doing their gigs doing their bits in front of a panel of experienced comedians oh, okay okay um yeah it's great Patterson and Tucker Carlson high five and this is yeah, it's crazy. My grandma hates you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't mean it. <laughs> yeah, the fuck she does. Yeah, she does. Oh, oh man. I just thought that was great. The fuck she does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend. We've we've actually I've shown a couple clips from that show on here before. That was the same comedian who says, uh, "I'm not retarded, but I like rocks." 
I don't, I don't know if you remember that one. It's like they just make me feel good. I got I got a couple in my pocket right now, and he mm-hmm. pulls out a couple rocks in his pocket. <laughs> um, Ridiculous. All right, y'all. Well, Stephen, I guess is gone for good. We might never see him again. He. I was gonna. Just, I was gonna cheers to him yet. for winning trivia, man. And but yeah. he's gone. Well, he said he's suing Comcast tomorrow for one billion dollars in lost revenue <laughs> for these interruptions. <laughs> Wait, no, he should sue the city that Comcast operates in, or something totally mm-hmm. not related. There we go. That yeah. makes makes, may, makes way more sense. Yeah. Um. All right, y'all. Again, we do this show every week, 8 p.m. here on primarily Rumble, but we're also on Twitter, YouTube, Odyssey, Facebook, and Peaceful Sea Network. Um, and MySpace. And, and MySpace, apparently. Mm-hmm. I guess Alden has his own side gig going. <laughs> I'm bringing back MySpace. It's going to be cool again. You wait. Uh, Top my eight. Ne- coming my up. next broadcast here will be uh, from Montana. I'm driving up on Saturday. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So are you guys good. like just seasonally or like moving, moving? It's just, it's just me going up right now. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Going up. Yeah. Every so often this whole summer to try to build the, uh, build, build the house. So see how it yeah, goes. Good on you. But uh, yeah, I'll be doing this using Elon Musk's Starlink next week. And right, uh, yeah. we will likely have a guest on who's been on the show once before. Chris Brown. A grizzly bear. Yeah. Oh yeah. A grizzly bear. I mean, we might have two guests, I guess, if that's the case. Um, so yeah, make sure you come back next week. Always tune into the free Georgia podcast. If you are a Georgian and you want to know what's going on in the state of Georgia, free Georgia podcast Mondays at 8 PM. And you can tune into my soccer podcast, um, called the Wrexham Texan on Sundays at noon Eastern. Um, which by the way, we brought up first, I know there was some disagreement about that last week. (laughs) Yes. Like I think Zane brought it up to make fun of you. Zane first. always brings it up to make fun of me. <laughs> he doesn't then, know he's just plugging it. Yeah. He, he is just plugging. Yeah. Maybe it was his underhanded way of, of <laughs> plugging my show that he loves so dearly. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's his favorite. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Peace.